Good morning. Let's see, let's get this going on. Oh, I got my webcam covered up. There we go. <laughs> How about that? All right. Let's go ahead and let's get started. So, welcome. It's been a long week. So, I'm going to work on this character that I had started as part of, I think, I think I'm going to work on this character. Um, I'm just trying to get the spotlight ready is all. Um, yeah, so I worked on this character. I designed her as part of the ZBrush Summit stuff last year, uh, which was awesome and super fun. Um, the theme was redesigning an iconic character so I chose Mother Earth <laughs> um, since the theme was kind of reused um, as part of the uh, the stuff that we were doing with Pixelogic I also did the Man of the Moon you see he's got kind of like this moon shape to him um, so what do you guys think what would you like to see? Would you rather see Man in the Moon? Or would you rather see Mother Earth? What do you think? Mother Earth? Mother Earth? It looks it sounds like Mother Earth is gonna be pretty popular. Because there are a lot of things like in working on Mother Earth that I want to do to be able to kind of clean up her forms, especially with like her face. I want to refine her legs, um, work on her hands, um, you know, things like that. So it'll be a lot of, yeah, it sounds like Mother Earth is going to win it out. So let's keep Mother Earth then. <laughs> so the idea behind this particular one um because you want to see what i'll add to her that's funny um so the idea behind this particular one and i'm trying to decide if i want to yeah i'll, I'll have to go through and kind of change things out some uh, i want to clean it up and make it so that it's a little bit more like the concept in some ways like you know for instance i really like the hair and how simplistic the hair is and clean it is uh, so I'll probably try to do another version of the hair where it feels a little bit more uh, tight and clean, uh, true to this concept. Um, the idea is for it to be the millennial Mother Earth, you know, sort of thing, where it's like, <laughs> where it's like, it's this, it's this gal and she's just, Quentin, dude. Um... Yeah, so she's just so tied to what's going on with her phone. Um, as you can see, you know, lovely, beautiful uh, phone. <laughs> that she doesn't, she's not paying attention to everything that she's creating and ends up creating the flying fish, you know. So the flying fish was a result of mother earth being distracted while she was doing her stuff <laughs> she might be texting father time <laughs> telling him she'll be late from work you know <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> hey you chuck um, i'm hopefully i'm hopefully going to keep this stream a little bit short last night on the way home from Noman, um there was crazy traffic on the 101 there isn't usually this bad of traffic it usually takes me about 20 25 minutes to get home it took me an hour and a half it took me an extra hour to get home and it was oh i'm just wiped oh so here's what i'm going to do yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was it was a fun idea. Um, all part of the ZBrush Summit last year, so it was um, it was fun. I've got the whole early uh, most of the creation process um, on 
my personal stream. So if, if that's something that you're interested in checking out at all, um, uh oh, getting some sort of notice from Autodesk. Huh. The Autodesk desktop app has been updated. Okay. I don't care. Go away. <laughs> hey, I'm doing stuff. Go away. There we go. Autodesk is so bossy. All right. So this is going to be kind of the view that I want to sync it to. You know what? Maybe, maybe a little bit larger. Let's zoom in a little bit. So when I when I sculpted this, I sculpted this kind of kind of looking at the concept rather than matching it up because I wanted to keep the the uh, the character a surprise. So I'm gonna kind of line this up some. Let's show a timeline. Oh, I don't want to. Okay, let's do something like that. Although it's interesting because it looks like there may have been. Wonder if this is Oh shoot. Yeah, let's just line this up again. So yeah, one of the things I'm going to want to try to do. is try to fix some of these things that aren't quite lining up. It's not too bad. It's actually really quite close. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, they're parrots. Um, one of the things that not a lot of people talk about about LA um, is that along the northern end of the county in Pasadena area here in Temple City, um, we have parrots, wild parrots. I have no idea how they got there and there's a lot of there are a lot of stories about how that happened. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a funny fun thing. Is the concept my original design? Yes it is. Yes it is. Okay. So lots of things kind of going on with her. Let's start. Let's start with the hair. I'm going to start by doing this. We'll say polygroups, auto groups. Did it work or is it all merged together? It's all merged together. Oh, you know what? Here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say split hidden, so we have the leaves in their own thing. Um, I might need to use those leaves to be able to create some sort of IMM scatter brush or something like that. We'll have to see. Um, with this, let's go ahead. Let's split hidden. Let's use that knife curve brush. And I'm just going to slice that off. Fastest haircut she has ever had. Okay, something kind of like that. Lots of slicing, right? Lots of slicing. Okay, I control W just to make sure that that's all one poly group. And then I've got to make sure that it's all the same color too. So let's go ahead, MRGB color fill object. And there we go. Now we can get started here. Kind of smooth that out some. Trim dynamic and kind of sculpt it down so that it's got more of a consistent shape with what I want. Okay. I'm going to take those leaves and turn them off. Okay, let's work on getting the hair to be more correct. Okay, a 
lot of it's just kind of matching things up, but I also want to make sure that once I get it to match up pretty well, I want to make sure that it is working pretty well, you know? Uh, Got to make sure that it's looking good from different angles. This is all like super, super rough, uh, roughly sculpted because, you know, when you have to do something in three hours, it's like <laughs> you, uh, you cheat things a little bit, right? Smooth. It's such a fun sculpt though. Like I, I super enjoyed the theme for the for the sculpt off this last year. Uh, this coming year, with the Zira Summit being in person, I suspect that the sculpt off will also be in person. Um, which is you know, both a, both a disappointment, but also you know it's fun. It's fine. Oh, I'm gonna have to like refine the back of the head some, as I can see from what was revealed there. Um, let's work on kind of refining the shape of the hair on this side. Let me see. I need to get my smooth stronger. Oh, did I just see a hummingbird? Oh, just sparrows. <laughs> We have this. Uh, we had this hummingbird that was coming around for a while, and and we were like, you know what? We've got to get a. We got to get a. <laughs> we got to get a feeder. <laughs> we got to get a hummingbird feeder. Um, and um, so we did. We got a hummingbird feeder, and the hummingbird all of a sudden stopped coming around. <laughs> It's like, uh, when you stayed in Alhambra, you used to hear those parrots every morning. Yeah, we, we do hear them every morning. Like, there's a huge colony of parrots uh, that they they either live, like, right here, like, in the trees, just on the other side of a couple buildings here. And so, we like, they're coming back and forth around these trees around here. We can hear them all the time, sometimes all through the night. Um... Do I find it distracting to start in color? Sometimes. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of turn it off and, and keep it very basic. Um, it can be really helpful, though, to, to work with the color on because it helps you to kind of clarify your artistic direction. Um, the thing that gets really troublesome with it is that sometimes it distracts you from the color. Or, sorry, the forms. Um, Let's turn on transparency so we can see what's going on with the actual head underneath. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, I mean, having color is it's helpful. It's just another tool. Um, so yeah, you'll see me shift back and forth between it every so often. Um, right now, I'll probably leave it on though. Let's see. see I tried turning on symmetry just in case it was uh, in case it was symmetrical it's not <laughs> let's go over here let's pull this down some try to make it a little bit more even A little bit too caved in right there. 
in any case, I, I'm considering using this. Uh, oh yeah, smooth stronger. Yeah, you saw where to find that, right? So that's underneath uh, underneath the brushes, and you and you can come in and uh, and you can find it underneath the uh, smooth whether wherever it went to, smooth right there. Just double tap on that, and you have all sorts of different kinds of smooth in here. Um, I don't, I don't actually come in to use any of these except for smooth stronger. Um, but one of the things that's that's pretty powerful is that there's this uh, smooth directional, uh, and then there's smooth valleys and smooth peaks. Like these these three, in addition with the smooth stronger, these are probably going to be the most most used ones. I actually haven't. I haven't played with anything else. It's interesting to see, you know, smooth groups or smooth crease. I'm guessing that this is just a matter of like different things being turned on in the smooth brush, smooth brush settings, smooth brush settings, um, where it's like you're, you know, smoothing by groups. So like if you start smoothing on one poly group, it's not going to spread over to the next poly group over. Um, smooth creases. It's I'm not even sure why I would want to do something like that, but it's an option. Um, yeah, so if you have a, if you have creased edges, it'll go through and smooth just the creased edges, I guess. Um, smooth subdivision, that's kind of cool. Uh, oh, sorry. The smooth valley, so if you have lots of like, you know, high, low detail, um, it'll smooth just the low detail and kind of like, you know, get that to come up and smooth toward the high detail and then opposite with like smooth peaks. It's going to be like the peaks in your, in your sculpts and it's going to smooth that down and leave the valleys untouched. So it's, it's really pretty neat. Um, and there are all sorts of brushes. You, you should definitely, definitely come and kind of play through some of these, um, scales. It looks like these uh, these brushes are probably going to be like clay clay based brushes, which is fun, or like a rake brush. It looks like right here, um, but yeah, lots of lots of different things that you can kind of play with. The clay brushes are pretty neat. The one that I find to be the most helpful is this uh, slash brush, the slash two. Okay, this one is amazing. I love the slash brush, and I'll show you. I'll show you kind of what it does real quick. Um, <clears throat> so this has this has kind of, this is a very directional kind of brush, and and it has this alpha attached to it, so you can go through and you can uh, let's turn off the RGB. So you see it like it cuts in and it pulls out. So what I'll do with this, I learned about this brush from uh, from Ashley Adams so so helpful is like i'll go through and i'll use it to kind of create like like uh stroke uh, directional details that sort of thing kind of going on in there um or the thing that i'll use it the most for is to be able to create like this sense of like layered uh kind of like like knots in wood or different like like if I were to do like a stylized cigarette, I would do I would use this brush to be able to kind of sculpt in the like the ash on the end. Um, I'd use it for like a knot on a tree. Um, I use it all the time. Or like for instance, uh, I did something for I can't tell you what it is, but I I did something for the Avengers Campus um, in Disneyland Paris, and there was battle damage on this on this on this thing. Um, and I use this brush to be able to, uh, to be able to sculpt in battle damage, like, like, like alien laser points, you know, alien laser damage in, in this, uh, it was, it was fun. It's super great. So yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's a bit of that fantastic tool. Um, I am going to see about kind of getting got something in my eye. I can't see. I can't see. Okay, 
That's better. I'm just trying to kind of better align this. It's really pretty close. It's just a matter of, you know, tweaking things here and there. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think I, I like having the ear small and low like this. Um, so I think I'll keep it like that. Uh, the nose is a little bit off though. Let's kind of, let's kind of fix that. Buy viewers. No, I don't buy viewers. I earn them. <laughs> buy viewers. That's actually something that you get all the time. Um, and I feel like I've gotten those messages like a <laughs> hundred times more often uh, when I hit 10K on Instagram. It was... I got all sorts of those sorts of uh, messages. Hola, Diego. ¿Cómo te va? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and kind of... I'm going to add in... Oh, let's just... let's. Yeah, let's, let's kind of... Let's use uh, the insert mesh primitives brush. <laughs> Gracias, compadre. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Let's turn on MRGB so that this thing kind of comes out. Oh, uh, that's why. Okay. Hold control. Now we're good. I had the... Uh, What's it called? The Wetsmer Diggits. I had the MRGB turned off and so it didn't draw it out with the with the color and everything and, and then give it a couple of subdivision levels just so I can smooth it out and have it be nice and smooth. So you can see you can see kind of how uh, how I kind of cheated things. If I go ahead and unhide things, the uh, the hips, it's actually just painted. It's it's not like actual pants, so it's <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> Let's get some hair blocked in here. But yeah, I lived in. Uh, I lived in Chile for two years, so I speak Chilean Spanish, but my in-laws are from Nicaragua, so I also speak, <laughs> I'll say Nicaraguan, but it's not really Nicaraguan, it's more Mexican, I guess, because <laughs> they've been here in the States, and, and honestly, there's not... Um, there aren't very many, like Nicaragua is a small country, but Mexico is huge. Um, so there are a lot of, um, like there's a lot of uh, Mexican culture around, a lot of, especially here in LA where, where we're pretty close to, uh, pretty close to Mexico. So it's, so that's pretty neat. Yeah, let's turn the smoothing like way down. I did think about wanting to like um wanting to uh work on the character that I'm working on for my Nomen class. Um Uh, it's a little bit messy. That's a little bit better. 
Like I'm trying to be careful not to make this form too messy. I don't want it to get messy. I want it to stay nice and clean. And it's not the cleanest, but it's you know it's clean enough that I can say it's clean, right? Um, but yeah, I want to make sure that I'm getting that sense of the muscle kind of being pushed out of the way. Muy buenos días. Tengo una pregunta para hacer un pose como lo hacer para no dañar el modelo. A o T. Si tiene mucho objeto en la ropa, pues sí. Um, lo único que te puedo decir es si si quieres poder sacar un oh shoot. Uh, si puedes hacer si quieres hacer un pose con el personaje uh, yo siempre intento hacer el modelo en, en la forma de, de, de A pues um, porque en, en T te hace más difícil posear la ropa en una forma natural um, es siempre más, más eficaz hacerlo en forma de, de A porque la, la ropa va a estar cayendo un, un, en una manera que, que, siente más, que siente más natural con, uh, pues, con lo que uno espera. Uh, <ríe> pues sí, de nada aquí yo. <ríe> um, Así que cuando, cuando se puede, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go back and kind of say, say what I'm saying in, in English here in just a minute. Um, I try to answer questions in Spanish though when I can because, or when there, when there are questions, because I feel like, um, I feel like when you're streaming in English, it's harder to, it's harder for people to want to ask questions if they don't speak English. Um, Every once in a while, I'll have things pop in in like Korean or Russian or Chinese or <laughs> or German. <laughs> um, I manage Portuguese a little bit, but or like understanding it, I can't speak it very well uh, <laughs> or very much. Um, but yeah, whenever it comes through in Spanish, since I speak Spanish, I try to I try to answer those uh, those questions. Um, it helps people feel more included. I like language. Um, I do a little bit of French, but not enough to really say more than où sont les, to les toilettes and, you know, <laughs> sorts of things. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so to finish that question, uh, para terminar, um, yeah, en, en forma de A, um, it, para simular la, la ropa y, y todo eso, um, se le hace más fácil en la forma de A eh, en vez de en forma de T, porque, uh, porque la forma de T va, va a estirar y va, va, pues, pues sí, va a jalar, va a estirar la ropa, uh, especialmente por aquí debajo, uh, debajo de, la, de los brazos. Um, yeah, why not? Let's, let's do this. Uh, aquí debajo <laughs> debajo de, del brazo va a estirar la, la ropa y va a todo a um, acumular se va a juntar todo aquí encima del, del hombro así que uh, siempre es mejor uh, hacerlo así como con, con con el brazo extendido así porque se le hace más fácil que, que simula la, 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 la tela de la ropa Encima de esto, porque se siente más natural, no va a estirar nada. Um, but yeah, so, so the question was about, um, let me see, it said, uh, I have, a, I have a, a question to make, uh, a pose uh, that won't dañar, uh, is like damage, uh, like it won't hurt the, the model in A or T pose. Um, if you have a lot of objects in the clothing um and like i i recommend doing the a pose because like the a pose if you need to simulate anything it's it's more natural 
um, and then um, and then you're kind of like halfway between like in like a like a raised arm pose, um, and you're and you're you know you're halfway between between having your arm raised and having your ra- arm lowered. So you get a lot. It's a, it's a it's it's a lot easier to get your clothing in a nice neutral position. Um, it's really great for simulations. It's really great for getting the anatomy right. Um, but yeah. Uh, from Venezuela. I speak English and now I've moved to Brazil and I'm learning Portuguese. It's a mess, but it's good to know a little bit of everything. Yeah, it is. I like, I like, I like language. It's a, uh, I feel like it creates a bridge. Um, it creates a bridge between people and I think that that's really 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 neat Um, helps people to feel welcome um, in places where they might feel a little bit estranged it helps people to feel connected Um, do you prefer sculpting or working while you're sitting or standing I love having the option of doing both in fact I got myself like a nice chair and a standing desk super cool i'll uh, i i actually uh i think i recorded video for it so i can make a a reel i i i'm terrible with reels and i don't want to move into that uh i don't want to move into that era where everything has to be video content it's terrible (laughs) it takes so much time um and yes it's more engaging but it's just, oh, it's a nightmare to have to put all that together. Um, so yeah, I I like to I like to kind of switch off between standing. I think I have the body selected. That's why it's not working for me. I was like, why isn't the hair moving? It's because I hadn't selected the hair. Dummy. Good golly. Some people's kids, right? (laughs) Have you seen... I actually don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Sioma NYC? Or is it, or is it Chowman? <laughs> Chowman? 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 Chowman NYC. No, I haven't. Is it, is that a... <laughs> I wouldn't be able to even roughly guess what... what that would be muchas gracias el inglés para esta profesión es importante pero me cuesta un poco y también de pronto llega algo que ofenda o tenga doble sentido me aclaraste más sobre esto <laughs> pues espero no ofender, uh, ofender pues pero yeah No, I, I'm not affiliated with with Character Workshop. Um, one of the things that's really nice, though, with Shane is that um, he does have a lot of really cool professional experience. He does really great work. Um, um, but then he also does, like, the ZBrush Live. Uh, so it's it's really, really neat. I'm going to do a new version of this hair and really like <laughs> clean it up. Um, <coughs> I did this thing the other day that I really liked. Um, that really made like this kind of uh, this kind of shape, this kind of shape, like it's really clean and really like direct and everything. 
uh, it made it really simple and, and I really liked it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do something similar with that here. Insert multiple edge loops. We'll keep the poly groups. Oh, in fact, let's just let's turn it to alternate poly group just because that will give me different poly groups for the top and then I, from what I have. Yeah, that's a good idea. And let's go ahead and say mask edge loop partial. We'll get these masked out invert everything there and then we'll say deformation inflate just a smidgen okay there we go just so it makes it so that it kind of rounds out the profile instead of it being so direct um, but yeah let me see as a student in his class he does a really good job explaining very basics of ZBrush um, as well as simplifying the whole process from start to finish and how to create a character. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Daniel, how you doing? <laughs> Long time no see. At least it feels that way. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say bevel two rows. Let's get something kind of like, yeah, kind of like that. Orale. Okay, there we go. Just want to make sure that I am living my happiest little life here. Oh, shoot. That, that, invert, control W. Okay. In fact, we can just invert that and we can say control A. And then we can say inflate in the negative direction. How about that? Boom, bada, bing, yeah. There we go. And then with the edges, we can go ahead and we can say crease, edge loop, partial. Boom, 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 something like that. We can say inset, polygroup all. Hit standard. I don't like the equidescent stuff, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, extrude, polygroup all. And we'll just kind of start bringing it out. And you see it's extruding it out. If I hold shift, boom, real cool. Okay, I am going to invert this. What do I want to do? I want, here, let's, let's do it this way because this will be easy enough. Um, I'm just going to kind of do it on every other one instead. But what I want, to, uh, you know, we can just use the mask. We just use the mask edge loop. That's that's super simple. Let's keep it simple. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add a little bit more puff to these sections so that it's not this huge gaping hole. Um, so we'll just kind of extrude that out so that it feels like a nice rounded bevel. Say okay. So now we got something like that going on. This might be a little bit too clean. Uh, we'll have to play with it and see if we like what is going on. But for right now, it's not too bad. Say inset polygroup all. Just kind of boom, just pull that in, sound like that. say polish groups so that way we get this nice kind of circular shape in here and then we'll just extrude this in so we get this nice kind of kind of a ring shape in fact let's uh let's take down the divisions here we'll change this to q mesh polygroup all and that should get rid of it there boom just like that so nice okay so now this this feels like it's kind of confusing at first but it should hopefully make sense here in just a minute um, I'm going to take this same shape and I'm going to bring it up turn it and bring it back over in here and I think what's going to be helpful with this is to come over here, let's say taper, 
kind of taper this in a little bit, taper this out a little bit. Okay, that'll help to kind of create a little bit more of that shape. Oh, here, let's say accept. Make sure this is centered here now. And we can do a similar sort of thing here, kind of taper this down, taper this out. And then we'll work on making it feel rounder, right? So we'll go ahead and say accept. Just kind of sculpt this into place so that it feels a little bit. Now here's a cool trick. I'm going to use this. Uh, use the the transpose line. Just to get a little bit more of a bend to it. And I'm not I'm not too concerned about it being like, you know, perfectly clean. I just want the shapes and I want to to really work on getting these uh, kind of structures in here. Uh, since this is hair and it's supposed to be feeling pretty organic, I just kind of want to get a little bit more of the idea of that, uh, of the concept, how the concept has like this nice, uh, super simplified sort of hair bun going into it. And since this is like, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll change it up so that it's not quite the same here. Let's take say insert, you know, say single edge loop, get rid of these through here. In fact, we could come in and just kind of like smooth it at random in some places here, just to, just to give it some, some fun variation. Shane Olson, he's the man. He's actually hugely responsible. Um, he and, and Matt Thorup, I think Matt Thorup more than more than Shane, but Shane is also part of how I got my job with Warner Brothers Games back uh, back in the day. Um, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Maybe placing three pieces so it looks more like the knot that Scout's making their scarves. Yeah, that's that's a that's an option too. Um, I think I'm I'm kind of liking how this is going so far. It's just a matter of you know getting the pieces in there and then you know, kind of working things out. I think that the uh, the edges here are a little bit too square, too boxy. And so by rounding them out, <clears throat> by rounding them out, I'm hoping that'll kind of uh, consolidate these shapes, to, uh, consolidate these forms together a little bit. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job, uh, helping it to feel a little bit more like one solid round piece rather than two rings kind of interlaced. Um, something kind of like this is starting to work. Oops. Uh, so I started watching or re watching, I guess, Multiverse of Madness yesterday. It's not my favorite, but it's fun kind of fun. I liked it better than Thor uh, Love and Thunder. <laughs> I feel like it's um, I feel like what's happening a lot with these newer Marvel films is like they're trying to more force kind of the family uh, film aspect of things by including kids and I don't think that it's uh, quite right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't like how it was done <laughs> but uh, you know whatever um, 
Yeah, just not my favorite. Okay, let me see if I can get this to be positioned more or less. Has anybody else seen uh, seen those films? Uh, did you what? Well, I, we don't want to give away any spoilers or anything, but um, I'd love to to know what it is that you guys thought. What is it that you know? If there's anything in you that you can think of that you liked about it, that um, you know, without giving out too much of the story. Because, you know, it's totally okay if you like it, even if I don't. <laughs> I did. I did work for, I did work for Avalanche. Um, I worked on the Hogwarts, uh, Hogwarts Legacy game as a character artist. Um, that was awesome. I'm super excited about it, and I'm hoping to get to play it at some point. <laughs> um Hopefully I don't have to buy a PS5 to be able to, to play it. But, you know, it's it's one of those things that I'm super, super, super excited about and really want to... Um, really want to get to play. I have a, I have uh, I have a couple of friends that work for like PlayStation and stuff. Dude, Prashan's here. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I like multiverse. It was actually pretty graphic for being PG thirteen. I I I think I think it still fits probably within that PG thirteen range. But I do I definitely agree. There there is some really interesting stuff to it. Um, definitely gets kind of graphic in there. I haven't watched Thor yet, but I really enjoyed Doctor Strange too. That's good. Uh, but yeah, how you doing, Prashan? <laughs> Quinta! <laughs> I haven't watched movies since 2016, I think, but I play games. That's cool. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, what's been What's been your favorite movies to watch? You know what? I think I'm going to do like a quick topo run on this hair. On this hair. Hot dog. Come on. Hair. Uh, just for the sake of being able to get something that I can... You know, use cleanly. That's not clean. That's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and kind of lower my brush size a tad. I'm just going to try to like connect things. Uh oh. There we go. Um make a few strokes through here so that we get something somewhat decent and then uh, let's commit it and we'll start to topologize the rest of the hair okay I'm going to hide the hair bun but what I want to do is I want to split unmasked so we can come down here and we've got this uh, this hair piece that we can, in essence, start working on. And then with Z Modeler, this is where we got to work the rest of the magic. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Wreck-It Ralph is great. I love Wreck-It Ralph. I'm on Facebook and have to stream up there as well. Said hello, but I'm unsure if the notification... Oh, that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, you're I think you're right. I think that Facebook is not going through. Um Twitch is always my my go-to when I'm watching a stream because I feel like it's more 
it's more live it's more um yeah it's it's really nice um Uh, but YouTube is another good option, and YouTube is great because the stream will always be there. It'll always be up on on the on the YouTubes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change some things. We'll say snap to surface for our point actions. We'll say extrude, snap to surface for a, our edge actions, and then for the face, uh, we can just say do nothing. We don't really need it to do anything at this moment. Although if that changes, we'll uh, we'll decide something else. Um, I'm just going to kind of move these points around so that they fit more where it is that I want them to be. Get that corner to be up in there. Something kind of coming around like that. And we can just start kind of building things out. I love Z Modeler, guys. Like this is such an awesome tool. I'm gonna bring this out. It's one of those things that I wish that I had always had, um, and that I'm just so 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 grateful that it exists now. And the sun's starting to come out and bother my eyes, so I'm going to need to adjust this a little bit. I can't see. <laughs> So now we've got like that top section. Um, I'm going to see about let's extend this down. smooth to be able to see that and you can see like if you if we look at this just by itself you can see that it's got some creasing to it so let's get rid of the creasing because that messes through that messes with things uh uncrease all oh and you can see i've got a i got an extra little piece over here it looks like that's the only extra little piece so let's just go ahead we'll say shift d let's come over here we'll say delete a single poly and now we're good Okay, kind of nice. Do nothing. I'm going to add in an extra edge loop here and here. And let's just kind of come up and we'll just, uh, we'll start moving these points ever so slightly just to make them snap. like this resolution for now uh, while we get the rest of the rest of this hair piece kind of blocked in um, let me see any tips on hair hair is exactly what I'm working on right now so hopefully hopefully this will be helpful um, you always kind of want to think about keeping things consistent so right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to make uh, a low resolution mesh that I can then go ahead and he's like if you remember let's see let's turn this back on we got this uh, we got this hair bun up here that I created and I, I like this I like how this how this feels how this is working so what I'm wanting to do now is create uh, create like a like some hair chunks for her head um, that will feel kind of similar in style to that uh, trying to keep things as consistent as possible and then I want to create the mass of hair that kind of comes in behind her. Um, so it, it, you want to keep things consistent in style. You want to keep thing. You want to you want to kind of understand what kind of hair you're sculpting. Um, let me 
see if I can get back to that hair piece here. Um, but yeah, super, super, super neat. Um, now that I've got all this, I can just come in and say extrude and we'll tap alt so we can get the whole loop here. Oh, uh, looks like it, something's not quite right. Oh well, we'll fix this. This is no big deal. Kind of bring this down, bring that down, bring this over. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It almost feels like it's masked. It's so stinking dark. Here, let's let's turn off all the colors so that hopefully we can see things a little bit better. Give us a little bit better of a view of what's going on here. I love using Z, uh, Z modeler for for retopology. I, I did a little bit of a demo on this in my for my uh, for my class last night. Um, oh, here's what I'm here's something I'm going to want to do. Let's say insert single edge loop. We'll hide that. We'll say geometry modify topology delete hidden so that way I can make these pieces as separate. Um, this is going to be helpful to help me get kind of like this this layered effect so like I can make sure that the flow of the hair goes in the proper directions. Um, let's say extrude. Bring that out. Let's see about getting these to snap together. These don't have to align. Um, in fact, I do want to think about how, okay, so, so let's, let's turn the pony, uh, not the pony back on, let's turn the, the bun back on. I am going to want to make sure that things flow into this, uh, into this bun, uh, so that it's like, you know, get, cause that's where the hair is flowing too, right? So with hair, you want to think about where it comes from and where it goes to. So it's, it's always going to originate from those roots and it's going to flow out. Um, and where you have an instance like this where it's pulled into a bun or where it's, you know, flowing freely from behind her head, kind of, uh, kind of like that, um, then it's, it's kind of important to think about where the hair is going to. Um, I think... It could be cool if I did, so like she's got like a bun, but then maybe she's also got like a ponytail or something, or like a, like a, cause I mean, that's, that's kind of how it feels in the sketch. It's like, it feels like it's pulled back. We'll experiment with it. We'll try it out. If we don't like it, then we'll change it and do something different, but. I'm feeling so much more awake and alive than I was before the stream <laughs> or even at the beginning of the stream. Uh, last night was hard. Last night was hard. I am going to isolate that control W just to make sure that it's its own poly group. Oh, that's going off the wire here. There we go. Go ahead and kind of pull this down. Pull that down. Let me see. I saw a question. I, I think I missed it. Let me see. Hopefully my question isn't disturbing. I'm searching for a book or course about elements and principles of art, but the things on the internet weren't so comprehensive. So I wanted to know, do you have any suggestions about it? Um, so when you're talking about elements and principles of art, are you just talking about like art principles? Um, Cause I mean, there, there are, it's one, it's one of those things like, so, so writing a book is a huge undertaking. Um, and I feel like there are a lot of really, really good books out there. Um, some of my favorites. Let me see if I can grab something here. Oh, drop stuff. So this is a really good one. Um, 
Steve Houston uh, figure drawing for artists. Okay, uh, this one has a lot of very very beautiful uh, kind of you know structural. You know, it's all it's all talking about like the structure of the body, the structure of uh, the forms of the head, different things like that. It's it's talking up. It's showing different classical views and. You see, it it even talks about lighting, uh, like lighting and highlights. Ooh, see, yeah, kind of hard because I got my microphone in the way and I don't want to bump it too much. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely the super stunning book. So that's really good if you're if you're looking for something about drawing. Um, there are other things also, like. This one's really kind of a popular series, um, Drawn to Life. This has lots of different, uh, just try, ways to be able to capture life and gesture and pose and and uh, making making things feel like they come alive through your sketches, through your drawings. It's all about observation. It's all about um, capturing what you what you feel in addition to what you see. So that's that's a really good one. Um, so far as like, so far as modeling goes, uh, two that I've always used are these ones, uh, stop staring. <laughs> it's really good about topology. And then this one, which is digital modeling. This one is incredible. And, uh, it's taught me a ton about, uh, topology edge flow and things like that. These books are super old, but they're, uh, but they're so, so good. Um, like this digital modeling, it's from William Vaughn. Um, copyright 2012, <laughs> you know, it's, they're old books, but they are so, so good. Um, if I'm looking at wanting to learn 3D though, most of what I try to dig into are tutorials or uh, YouTube channels. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I do have my own tutorials and courses that I, that I offer. Um, let me see. Go over to Flip Normal, as we can see. Um, smartest, search me. So you can see I've got some, some stuff up here um, that I can share with you guys. Let me, I can send you a link too. Um, but yes, oh no. Why didn't it click into my... That was really weird. Um, I'll send you guys a link to this. Um, I just got to grab it. Oops. If it'll let me. There we go. <laughs> so there's that. Um, there are also things like, you know, some free resources online too. Um, I want to check and see real quick. It looks like, oh, the marketplace will sometimes have sales too. It looks like, it looks like they're kind of between sales right now. So it's not anything going on right now. It looks like, uh, but that's an option. That's something that's available and, and ready for finding. You can learn all sorts of stuff. Um, I want to try the trial for ZBrush. When I open it, it says I have no license. What do I do? You contact Pixelogic. <laughs> um, that's not something that I'll be able to help you out with, but they'll be able to direct you into whatever's uh, whatever's going wrong with, with activating whatever licenses you have. Um, you could go to your licenses page on the Pixelogic website. Um, and if and you should be able to see your license there underneath licenses. Um, 
Yes, the hair will always radiate in from the scalp to the point to where the hair is bound together. Yep. Uh, Folygon, Danny Mac, Flip Normal is good places to start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, found that the Burn Hogarth books are good ones to have uh, in one's library as well as some of the translated Japanese How to Draw Manga books, How to Draw Animals by Jack Ham is a good one for that subject. That's cool. It's a great suggestion. Thanks for the answers. I really appreciate it. I'm most searching for things about rhythm, balance, contrast, mostly theory principles. Uh, yeah, so things like things about f figure drawing, things about you know things like this. Um, there will be some different live streams that kind of play with some of that as well. But uh, gosh, I can't think of anything specific at the moment. Let me see. Um, this book is pretty good, um, if you can find it, <laughs> Elemental Magic. This one deals a lot with rhythm and flow and things like that because it's dealing specifically with how to create um, appealing effects drawings. It's super, super nice. Um, Elemental Magic. I've I've referenced that book for several years now um, on different projects and for fun and things like that. Um, it's a really good one. Um, I can't think of really any resources where people you know, talk about or refer to um, You know, talk about rhythm and, and, and such with sculpting. I do know that there's uh, there's Anatomy for Sculptors. Uh, they have some free resources on ArtStation. So let me, let me pull up their page, actually, because they're really good. Um, yeah, there we go. Anatomy for Sculptors. They have some some book resources, but they also have a whole bunch of really really cool, um, just anatomy um, breakdowns to kind of show more or less kind of how how the muscles function, how they how their structure <laughs> fits within our and just it's it's am it's amazing, it's absolutely amazing the way that they go through and they they break things down the way that they simplify things. It's so stellar. It is so stinking cool. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend going through and checking them out because you know while it's not necessarily dealing with um, with rhythm per se, it it helps to really cement this idea of structure in your head. And I think that that sort of idea of uh, understanding how the anatomy happens will help to create uh, <laughs> I'm sorry Diego I don't know that I saw hopefully I... oh I didn't I didn't see your question actually so that I'll I'll see if I can get to your question here in just a second Diego um, but yeah because um, as, as you know the structure of how the anatomy goes it's easier for you to vary it up and create a sense of rhythm or flow uh, rhythm is going to have a lot to do with directionality so like it's uh, so like how things flow together um, you know, like if we if we look at like the mermaid's hair here, this rhythm, this flow, this uh, it's it's all it's all about kind of having a goal. It's like having having an origin and having a goal, and uh, and uh, so it's you know it's it's that's how you can kind of create this sense of harmony, a sense of uh, an idea of things kind of coming together and being unified in their end result. Um, things kind of hanging out underneath my desk bothering my feet um so i think i think it's more a matter of yeah practice also helps for sure but it's a matter of uh 
kind of just understanding structure and, and being able to push it from there um, can get kind of tricky, but it's fun. Let me see, I am going to say, oh, I don't want to have that anymore, let's tap Alt. And then how do I want to make this work? Because I know that I, I for sure want to have this go up and in. And we're essentially going to have this sort of effect going on in here. Snap that in, snap that in. Pull this over, boom, and boom. So this way we can get this flow kind of coming up. We'll get this flow kind of coming out. And in fact, it might be worthwhile. When it says do nothing, it really means do nothing. Um, let's do something like that. Okay, something that I'm trying to consider here, let's say insert, we'll say geometry, delete hidden, I want to add an extra loop down here without merging with that bottom most piece down here. Um, this way I can start to create a piece that kind of comes up from behind the ears and a piece that goes up from a, uh, above the ears. So let's kind of bring this down Something like that. Okay, so to get to Diego's question, let's make sure that I make sure that I understand it. Um, <clears throat> let's scroll up just a little bit here. Wow, things started moving. Um, Diego, Diego, Diego. Uh, how can I preserve straight all my edges when I Z remesh an object? Uh, they get kind of tilted. Z remesh is really tricky. It's a, um, there are a couple of tricks that I use to be able to try to control Z remesher. Um, in fact, I, I, I also have, I also have a course about that. Um, there's uh so, so you can use a couple of different things. You can use poly groups <laughs> you can, you can use Z remesh guides. Um, right here, this hard surface techniques. Uh, I use a lot of Z remesher for this. Um, I use a lot of Z modeler and things like that as well, but I use a lot of uh, Z remesher to be able to make these panels. Um, and the reason is, is that it allows me to control more, uh, just, just get like simple, clean grid topo topology on things. Um, it's also there in Spanish if you're interested in Spanish, but it's, uh, <laughs> uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and copy that link there in case you're interested in it. Um, but it's, uh, it's all about creating organic hard surface forms in, uh, using Z remesher. And you can see there are a ton of pieces here. So it's really, there's a lot of stuff there a lot of different ways that I'll go about creating hard surface pieces, but it's still the same sort of principle in using Z remesher with some of these other pieces like the, uh, like this piece kind of coming over is it's got a lot of really organic sculpting elements to it. And there are, um, I, I had to use some, some Z remesher to get that started. Uh, same with some of these other pieces going in behind it. Um, really, really fun. 
so polygroups is one thing. Z remesh guides is another thing. Um, yeah, it definitely helps out with, with armor because I talk a lot about like very organic sort of ways of, of approaching it. I talk about uh, insert mesh brush ways of approaching it. Um, so lots of lots of different types of elements kind of going into it and all of it to be able to fit a form, to be able to fit a shape, to be creative and, and direct your creativity in that sort of aspect. So really, really cool. Um, yeah, let me see. And practice definitely helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no, no, no bother at all. Uh, sorry, Sepper. Uh, hopefully that's pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Rajabi. That's cool. Uh, it's like the difference that comes into one's mind before and after having taken a drawing life, uh, a life drawing class uh, before one may be able to draw a pretty good character. But afterwards, one gets a more solid idea of how the body works and put together, use that and prove one's work. Yeah, it's definitely true. Um, the, 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 the principles, the, the basics will definitely always, always help. Um in creating something uh, more solid. And that's, and that's the idea, right? You know, we always want to try to make things feel more appealing, feel more, uh, you know, more correct. And uh, the more we the more we learn to observe, the more we learn to uh, to watch, and the more we practice, um, the more we push our range. The easier it is for us to and it's turn off the glasses. The easier it is for us to uh, begin to yeah begin to get things the way that we that we originally intend <laughs> or the way that we hope or sometimes even better trying to think sometimes I got to think a little bit more about how I'm going to structure things but I think it's I think it's important that I have like that full stretch of Topology that's all going the same direction. It's all and that way we keep that uniform directionality with it, and then we can kind of decide how we want it to intersect further up, right? I think I'm going to need to insert a loop here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Why'd you go and do that to me, ZBrush? Let's go ahead and say extrude. Pull that up. And then we'll say do nothing on the faces again, just so that we don't lose anything on accident. Okay. So this should be pretty all right. I think one of the things that I need to start doing is adding like intermediate loops in here. So we'll get one in here, one in here, one in here. 
And I'm just trying to create more of a sense of uh, roundness. And just take this down like really, really low just so that I can not overly smooth it. <laughs> It's funny. I was chatting with Matt Thorup. Um, he had he had done with uh, he had done one of those uh, you know ask me anything things. I do speak Spanish. Um, yeah, I don't. I I unfortunately don't have the time to be able to like uh, translate all my tutorials into Spanish. But I do have that Hogbot tutorial in Spanish, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, some of the, some of the words aren't going to be perfectly correct, but hopefully it should be. <laughs> hopefully it should be understandable. Every once in a while, I run into words that I just I don't know because like I I never had to use them professionally, and so it's um yeah, it's kind of tricky sometimes. But it's fun. I really like Spanish. I think that the world would be a better place if everybody spoke Spanish. <laughs> All right. So that's giving us a good, decent little flow here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's keep let's keep tinkering because I'm good at just tinkering and noodling and noodling and noodling and noodling. noodling. Um, I am going to say geometry crease. We'll say crease PG just to be able to to crease those outside edges. Okay, and I am going to hey Leonard. Control D, let's delete lower. So this will help to give us a little bit more, um, a little bit more to play with here. Cool. And one of the things that I kind of like is that it's not quite up to the shape yet. So I'm going to do a couple things. Let's say deformation. I'm going to inflate in a negative direction until everything pretty much touches. Okay. It's, and you'll notice too, it's inside of the head now, uh, which is great. It's exactly what I want. So I barely pass Spanish. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, I mean, did, I'm trying to remember. You, you didn't have to use it a whole lot up in San Francisco because that's, that's like the area you grew up in, right? Um, I'm going to use a cool trick, uh, morph targets. I'm going to use morph targets to be able to create thickness. This is something that that my men, one of my mentors taught me. I'm going to say store morph target, okay, and then under deformation, I'm going to say inflate until the piece gets to be aligned with more or less what I want, and we'll kind of adjust some of these points here and there. And then we'll we'll fix alignments and shapes and things like that later too after we have the thickness. But this is a really cool way to add thickness to a piece of geometry. So there we go. Okay, so we have we have that now. And if we come over here, we can say switch, and you can see like it's got both stages there. I'm going to say create difference mesh, and you'll notice up here it's created this piece that has thickness. So cool, so cool. His Spanish teacher was Japanese. That's interesting. Sometimes I didn't get it, so I would ask her in Japanese to explain. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, super, super cool uh, technique, though. So now that we have this, we can come in and we can say, um, where is this piece? Okay, there we go. So we can say insert, 
morph target hair piece thing here. We can turn this off and now we can just work on refining this piece so that it works for what we need. Um, let's do, so now I still have the, cre I sh oh, I should have had the creasing still on the other ones. We'll say crease PG just to be able to keep that so that way it's smooth on the outside but not on the inside. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that I want to do is do, 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 control shift S to shrink, control A, invert the mask. Okay. Let's boost our intensity some. And actually what we can do is we can say polish by groups. We can also say polish crisp edges. Yeah, that works better. That works better. Say inflate some just so that it's soften that out, inflate it some more. Okay, let's turn on our move topological. That way we can keep things kind of clean. We'll just start kind of pulling these pieces together, starting to create the overlap in our chunks. So you can see this and the way this is going to start to kind of come together here. Uh, this piece will need to kind of tuck in a little bit better. And then the hope is that we'll be able to get a really cool um, yeah, just kind of overlap for these hair shapes. getting some interesting stuff going on here. It's just a lot to kind of tweak and play with, but that's fine. Okay, so we're getting this too high. Yeah, there's a lot that I think we could go through and kind of refine with this, but I'm going to Oh, you know what, that's even coming to the wrong spot. So let's see if we can fix some of this. Looks like it's not coming quite far enough forward. Oh. Some of these things will get cleaned up some as we're uh, um, as we add in divisions or as we add in <clears throat> you know chunks or whatever whatever it is that we end up doing with the hair um, it should be pretty pretty neat and straightforward from here but Yeah, most, most of my goal with this particular character is to make something that feels a bit more polished, a bit more clean and 
you know what, let's do something like this. I'm going to take a screenshot right there, just so that I can have that as reference to be able to finesse and refine what's happening on the other side. It's coming to the wrong spot. That feels a little bit better, so let's let's try playing with that some. That's a little bit better. And here in just a minute, we'll see about. Um, oh, sorry, it's like super super itchy right now. Um, <laughs> had to back up to see that morph trick again. Very cool. To, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Zach Petrock taught me that one, and it was such a cool trick. <laughs> one of the things that's really tricky, though, is that if you inflate in a negative direction with that morph target trick to be able to create the difference mesh, um, the normals will be flipped, so your, your mesh will essentially be inside out. So you just have to go down to display... Um, display properties and hit flip and then you'll be good and golden um, yeah, let's see if we can turn on that turn on the glasses again in fact I need to rename that I'm thinking about shifting the color here might be cool to get it to be like red or something. I don't know, we'll have to see at some point. Okay, so now we got the hair, we'll call it the scalp, and then we've got the hair bun. <clears throat> now, what I want to experiment with, um, in fact, it might be worth just taking all the hair and having it terminate with the bun um, because this will allow this will allow me a little bit more freedom I think um, I because th what I think I want to do is take here, let's grab this Kind of pull it out some. Um, I think I might want to take Control H to hide the mask. Um, I might want to take the uh, the the poof down beneath, and I might make it just kind of coming out of the bun, um, which is kind of cool. Let's um. To get this particular shape, though, I'm really kind of interested how how I'll do it. Um, out of boundless curiosity, do you import your characters created uh, on ZBrush into other 3D programs? If so, what programs do you use your models in? Yeah, I do. Uh, I will take things pretty regularly over into Maya to render with Arnold. Um, I'll do like full texture passes and things like that too. Um, like a lot of the things that are up here on my art station um, are things that I've done inside of ZBrush. Like, uh, well, the witch, this witch is an example of one that I did, um, modeled inside of ZBrush, rendered inside of inside of Maya, full UVs, everything, um, at least for the body, <laughs> because the rest of everything I was able to use just a flat color. So I think I just did materials. Um, I've got this Katrina character. I've got this little witch apprentice. Um, got these guys. Uh, so yeah, this Katrina character. Um, she was a lot of fun. Uh, that was one that I did last year. Uh, yeah, last year for a draw, like a draw this in your style challenge. And then people could go through and kind of re redraw her in whatever style they wanted to, whatever style was their own. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're interested, you're still welcome to join. <laughs> Just you know. 
tag me or something and love to see it. Um, this character that I did as part of the um, School of Games. Um, I've been a I've been a a judge on their challenge for the last couple of years, so yeah, I try to I try to participate as well. So this was a, a fun character. I made her completely inside a ZBrush. Um, the textures were also done inside a ZBrush, and then I went ahead and developed the materials and did the render inside of inside of Maya uh, using Arnold. So really super fun. Um, just a really great fun little character. Uh, she was also done inside a ZBrush, um, except for the hair. The hair was uh, <laughs> the hair's X Gen. It was my first attempt at X Gen. Super crazy. Uh, this guy, same thing. Everything fully done inside of ZBrush, but then uh, taken into Maya for UVs and tech. Uh, well, the textures were done inside of ZBrush. Uh, the UVs and the render were done inside of Maya. Um, actually this guy won, uh, this guy won an honorable mention, uh, for this art station challenge, the, uh, the film VFX character art rendered stuff. It was, it was fun. It was really good. I, I really enjoyed being able to participate in that. And it was, it was neat to, <laughs> it was neat to win something too. Um, sweet tooth. I love this guy. He was so much fun. This is one that we did, um, all on a single stream for ZBrush Live uh, last year. Yeah, last uh, last February. Um, super love this guy. I, I've printed him out, but I need to go through and fix his fix his print a little bit. Um, I'd love to be able to like mold and cast him, turn him into <laughs> turn him into like a little little resin kit that I sell at Lightbox or something. I don't know. Um, but super super fun. Uh, so yeah, another example of something I did fully in ZBrush, textured in ZBrush, and then um, just rendered inside of inside of Maya. It was uh, it's really neat. <clears throat> so that's the kind of thing that I like to do. Um, so yeah, I do that sort of thing all the time, all the time. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Let's start to get this other hair kind of blocked in. I think what I'm going to do, say split unmasked, let's take this down here. Oh, it's the leaves, okay. <clears throat> I am going to I'm going to build this out with a bunch of spheres, I think, because she has kind of this very poofy, bushy sort of style of hair, but I get the, I'm trying, I'm trying to decide if I feel like they would be any kind of actual, actual flow to it, because if that's the case, then what I'll funny you get to certain points and then you're like why am I even talking I should make it some sort of flow um, yeah so what I'm going to want to do is I'll I'll try to honor the shapes but I want to make it so that it has more of a flow to it so I'm going to use a ring instead of instead of a sphere <clears throat> and my thinking is that what I'll do is I will take, let's say, uh, Q mesh, single poly, boop, 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 boop. I'm going to try something out real quick here. Um, let's. Ah, oh, quick save. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need to save, save. Quinn, Quinn's not, uh, 
not reminding me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take this, turn this to number three. There we go. We'll come over here, we'll say taper. And I'm going to taper this side out some so that it creates a little bit of a width here, but a little bit of a, oh, you know what? Instead of using taper, let's change it to deformer. We'll just kind of mask these out. We'll take this and just poof, kind of like that. That'll be better. If I wanted to, I could also come in And let's mask out the other side. And we'll just kind of scale this together so we get a nice, you know, kind of a cleaner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to create something of a, of a, <clears throat> kind of a, kind of a hair clump that I can kind of push and pull and, match together some oops uh, let's get pinch brush we'll just kind of pinch that end together so that it creates a shape there <coughs> hair clump a I might have to make this into a uh, into a brush, like an IMM brush. Um, make it available on Patreon or something. <laughs> especially if I, especially if it works well and, and we, uh, we decide we like it. I'm gonna take this and pull that out, pull that out. And get some overlap with this stuff so that it creates a little bit of a you know just just something something appealing something different yeah you know, it varies up the shape it varies up the silhouette <coughs> okay that's looking kind of nice so that'll be clump a control shift d we'll make this clump b and then for this one what i want to do is I want to kind of duplicate it out. Shrink it down, we'll kind of twist it a little bit and we'll shrink it down this way too so that it gets a little bit of a variation there. It's all about kind of figuring out just different ways to create interest. Um, that's really kind of not cool, I don't like that. Let's fix it. I don't like having that huge overhang. It's just, it creates a weird shape. So we're just going to fix it some. an extra loop in there so the quickest and easiest way to do that without ruining everything is we can just take the uh, slice curve and just boom oh just boom like that and then just hit control W uh, but this will help so that it's not this abrupt little stop to the curve and it, I don't know it just it just makes things a little bit nicer <coughs> Sorry, I better uh, clear my throat. I'm going to cut my audio for a second here. That's a little bit better. Okay. Um, one of the things that I'm considering, although I'm not entirely sure, let's do it. Let's just see kind of how it looks. 
Uh, crease edge loop partial, so we'll get crease in there, crease in there, maybe one for up here, one for there. I am going to want to, um, uh oh, how did that, ha oh, it must have been a mess up with the, uh, yep, that's totally what it was. Um, let's kind of take this and move it up some. There we go, that's better. Sometimes things get messed up, and it's it's nice that I caught that earlier rather than later, because <laughs> otherwise I would have had this messy piece, and I don't like having messy pieces. Um, let me see. I'm going to say insert single loop here. Eh, maybe not. Let's say let's say crease edge loop partial. Let's get some of these pieces to. In fact, let's change the change the polygon actions to do nothing, so I don't totally ruin my piece here. Um, one thing that I want to do is like I don't want this to be super ridgy. Um, I don't want it to be super edgy, so I'm going to take the uh, the crease level and take that down to like one, so that it still holds that form. <sighs> I kind of like it better softer. It's okay. It's okay though. I'll 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 keep the I'll keep the edges in there. I'll make edges on this one. Um so that you know, so that it's consistent. <laughs> but uh I think that something like that will work pretty well. Um I think that in the end, what I'll probably end up doing is just saying uncrease all, and that'll just, you know, that'll make it so that instead of having, <clears throat> instead of having this insane crease kind of going in, I, I can go ahead and, and experiment and get different feels more easily. Because if I, if I wait to add creasing until after I've drawn out all the little hairs, um, yeah, I can kind of pick and choose where I want to have it but it's going to be so so difficult to uh, yeah, let's go ahead and kind of just so I can preview that there's one there's two and um, let's do something let's do like one more don't want that come on come on come on come on select lasso please control shift a so that way I can kind of select this one clump and this is the new yeah new clump sweet I'm gonna click and drag this out just so I can have like an extra little something you know I might want to actually go through and change shape on this just a slight bit, uh, but I don't need to change it a ton. Uh, one of the things that I try to keep in mind when I'm creating IMM brushes or IMM hair brushes in particular, um, I like to try to think about um, having things be more of the same, but then having it so that I can Sorry, I gotta stretch a little bit. Having it so that I can um, kind of vary it up after it's created. In keeping with more of a toony rather than realistic look. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping it more more toony. Um, Cause like I feel like a lot of the creasing that's that's happening, it's 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 creating more of a more of a sense of hair rather than a sense of 
bush and nature. Uh, so that that's kind of the the balance I'm trying to create. It's 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 being it's a little bit tricky, but I think that if we can get it to work right, I think it'll be really neat. So it's yeah. something kind of like this cool kind of move this over a little bit in fact just for the sake of varying it up let's kind of invert our peak here and I think that that'll help to create some some you know different level of interest. The bottom doesn't have to be quite as whatever. Um, kind of leave it more or less how it is. Bring that in. Whoa! Big old hawk just landed in the backyard. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> Just took off. It's kind of funny. Yeah, we don't we don't usually get big birds through here. Uh You know, that, that creates kind of a cool look too. So so kind of varying things up in that sort of way could be interesting. Varying placement. You know, let's kind of push it over some or something. And then we'll uh, we'll vary up the clumps just slightly so that it's um So that it's not completely the same. I, I, I want to make sure that in drawing out these clumps that I'm not getting the exact same clump over and over and over again. I want it to feel a bit more unique. And a lot of a lot of the uniqueness will come in when it's uh, you know like after after I'm done uh, kind of drawing out the, the pieces. But I still want to get a little bit of a variety between the piece, the uh, the pieces that I'll be drawing out, for the sake of, you know, creating that randomness up front. Let's say crease that, crease that. We'll crease that and that. And you get a crease, and you get a crease. Hey you, why aren't you? <laughs> Don't you want a crease? <laughs> kind of working Just kind of take this and maybe what I'll do is I'll switch these two pieces places or something Bloop. but I'll do it like by hand so that it's hopefully more organic and <laughs> keep it a little bit uh, it's funny you guys uh, as you can tell by watching live streaming uh, being a professional artist means making it up like 90% of the time <laughs> okay so now I've got a B see gotta 
fix this piece a little bit. Not that one, the other one. There we go. Oh yeah. that together there we go and we'll just we'll use these three so let's rename this one we'll name it C uh, the thing the one thing that we want to made it out of the DMZ safe I have no idea what that means <laughs> together create like a clump here bring this together make a clump here just help it to help it to feel cleaner <laughs> demilitarized zone okay <laughs> Was terrible. Let's check our clumping here just to make sure that everything is yeah, pretty honky dory. Just want to make sure that everything's clumping nicely and that it's creating good shapes. Today's already different. I'm here with you guys. <laughs> Just saw the Disney statues. Ah, oh, thanks, man. That's so, that's so much fun. It's I still haven't been able to see them in person. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping at some point to be able to make it down to Florida to be able to see them, but it's like, doggone, doggone. It's, it's so funny. Cause like I've had, I've had a ton of friends go through and send me pictures of like, guess where I am. And they show me the pictures and, and I'm like, Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Okay, so now to be able to draw these out, I think I'm going to have it kind of like, kind of like this. Um, so we've got A, B, and C. Uh, with A, we, one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure perspective is turned off. You'll notice that like I'm, I'm trying to, to be aware. I want this to feel like it's drawing out this as the base. Um, so I'm going to put it something like, something like that, maybe it'll be about the same for each of them, but it'll be, you know, this is about what I, what I'm wanting. Um, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, create insert mesh brush. We'll say new. Okay. So now there's, there's our piece, which is great. We're going to go down, we'll say, create, create insert mesh, append, skip note until next restart. That's fine. I totally know that that's going to be a thing. Um, and then this and that last one, we'll say, create insert mesh, append. And now we've got this new brush that we can, that we can utilize. In fact, I'm going to go over here and kind of yeah, you see, dragging that out nice. Um, 
let's go to brush. I'm going to say depth. Let's put this something something more like that. I think I'm going to have to um, modify the depth for all the different pieces. So right now I'm on C. We're going to say brush depth zero A. Oh, not that depth zero. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and say brush. Um, let's say select icon. It's not going to save it as the, uh, let me see. Say control D a couple of times here, just so that it's nice and smooth. And now we'll say select icon. So that way it's a nice, smooth little piece. And it's not just a, <laughs> not just a weird thing. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll say that. And now we've got these pieces that we can use to block in some hair. I didn't realize that there was, oh, I guess I did realize there was creasing, but I, that edge loop in particular, I didn't, I didn't take it off. So I guess it's, <laughs> I guess it's there. I guess it's the thing. Um, <clears throat> let me start off by creating creating a clump something that we can start to kind of build a uh, like a like a base form off of and we'll just kind of keep it so that it's so that it's white for now so we can see the contrast um, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I save this brush out or else I'm gonna lose it so I'm gonna say save as We'll go back into Summit. Yeah, it should be the right folder, I think. Um, we will say hair curl clump IMM. Something like that. We'll rename it later, I'm sure. <clears throat> okay. I don't really need RGB turned on. But let's let's go through here and actually use Yeah, I want to try to match the hair shape here. So what I'm going to do, let's kind of shrink it down a little bit like that. Comment allez-vous? <laughs> that good, huh? So first thing I want to do is I just want to try to match the silhouette. And there will be a lot to, to do to really make this work quite right, but, okay, <clears throat> that's kind of a start, right? So a lot of what I can do here, in fact, let's, let's do this. This is kind of an interesting 
idea here. I'm going to select these and I'm going to control click and drag and just kind of modify based on what it is that I already have. And this should hopefully help to begin to create something of a, a shape language. <clears throat> you know, creating a, a continuity of uh, similar shapes that we already have. Um, pieces like this that I can kind of grab and pull up and in. We can use polygroups, auto groups. So this way we can just select individual pieces and start to start to manipulate that like that. And the whole idea of this particular piece is to get a form, is to get an idea of a volume and a shape. Um, it's not really anything more than that. Take this down, center the pivot, grow it out some. Hey, Kimmy. Kimmy, Kimmy. How you doing? Let's see, turn off the transparency. So far I'm getting kind of the shape. I want to pull it back off of her body though a little bit. I feel like it's going too far in front of her arm. I don't want that. <coughs> <laughs> kind of pull this back and pull yeah, that's kind of fun having that I want to get like a variety of like depth to this but I don't want it to be like like this where it's super competing with her arm for the foreground <laughs> This should hopefully create some sense of directionality, and purpose. So it's going to be hair, um, but it's it's this is just me kind of creating. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot, stop. Hit C, not V. There we go, color, fill object. So it's, it's just me going through and creating like a, like a basic hair form um, for the sake of having, you know, something to base the rest of my hair choices off of. Um, so yeah, it's, there's a lot to it. And I think, ooh. What if I were to take it? Okay, I've got I've got an idea that I want to play with. <clears throat> and I'm curious how well it'll work. I kind of want to give her this let's just let's just do it. I'll 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 say it instead of explaining it cuz this might be a little bit easier. Um grab this braid and just kind of make a braid on the end here. Um, I'm trying to decide if I like it or not. <laughs> so this is Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who are just joining the stream, uh, and for those of you who are new here, I'm Steven Anderson. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, 
I'm a character modeler at Marvel Studios Animation. I like to eat salmon and eggs for breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's kind of fitting that uh, Mother Earth and, you know, I've got a green banner along the bottom. That's kind of nice. Is it? Okay. It's slow for a second, but yeah, let me go ahead and, and save this. <clears throat> so a lot of what I'm going to want to try to do with this um yeah, salmon and eggs is awesome. It's, it's it's smoked salmon. It's something that I I, I had for the first time uh, when I went to Norway recently, and it was so good. It's what they it's what they served at the hotel for breakfast, and I was like, man, I I I want I want Norway breakfast to be <laughs> to be American breakfast. That's it's it was so so good. Um, so many more healthier options than having like you know the american pancakes or <laughs> you're skeptical i got you at salmon and eggs it's so good um and i try to get this like the smoked salmon at uh at sam's club because it's like this big old salmon for like 10 bucks instead of being like this little two serving bit of it for 10 bucks that I get at a regular supermarket. <laughs> I've got to see if, uh, if they, if they've got it back in stock, but, but yeah, it's so good. It's so good. So good, you guys. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to like play with some shape stuff here just to get, yeah, just to try to continue some of my shape language going on from the from the upper part of the hair. I really quite like that. And what I'll probably end up doing is I'll I'll decorate the hair going down with like flowers. <clears throat> That'll be really cool. That'll be really, really cool. I forget what those uh those flowers are called. Are they dahlias, is that right? I'm not a huge fan of sushi. Some every once in a while, I'll I'll like things like California rolls or or um, or gosh, I forget what the other ones are called that uh, that I like. But but yeah, sushi sushi is one of those that's kind of hit and miss for me. I know I'm probably just following your opinions now, but you know whatever. <laughs> Do you have a video uh, where you show how you made the blouse? Or a tip to be able to make the collar of the shirt it's very difficult for me yes i do actually so this character was i, I did this as part of the uh, z rush summit last year <clears throat> and so everything is actually on <clears throat> let me see let me get to um youtube it should be in here somewhere Oh look, we're live. Uh, let me see. I guess it'd be in here somewhere. Videos. Let me see if I can find the actual video. Here's so here's the a little video I did talking about adding spotlight into into ZBrush, which is super helpful. Yeah, it's going back too far. Oh, this should be it right here. The live ZBrush sculpt off. Uh, let's go ahead and click into it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has this has the whole process. Dismiss. <laughs> yeah, it might it might not want to actually play while I'm streaming, so we'll s I'll I'll send you. You watch Cheetos videos? I'm not sure what that what that refers to. Um, go ahead and pause that so it's not taking up bandwidth in my internet. Um, let me see. Let's 
let's grab this and we will say move topological and we will push and pull this into place. That's a little bit nicer. That way it's not blocking the ear, right? Kind of pull this up so that it, uh, it's a little bit too much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the thing that I'm trying to, to get a balance on is, oh my hell. I hate getting those spam bots. It's funny because it's like they seem to somehow come back every time and it drives me nuts like, <laughs> like why <laughs> why and how because i'm pretty sure it's the same exact username that we've had for uh the same thing in the in the past you know <laughs> the exact same thing okay so here's what we're going to do we are going to Plop in one of these guys right here. I'm just gonna turn it around. That's 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 one of those things that I didn't think about enough. Um, with when I made the brush, um, I didn't think about the orientation of the piece as I draw it out. Um, just that I wanted to make sure that I had it so that it was, <laughs> um, oh, here, here's, here's what we'll do. We'll say split unmasked points. <clears throat> um, which do I like? Okay. So bot subscribe, huh? That's interesting. Uh, which do you prefer, pen tablet or pen display, and why? I love. Um, I like both. There, there are definitely benefits to both. I, for work, I work on a Wacom Cintiq. Um, for my own stuff, I I just have a simple tablet. Um, I like having the tablet with the you know because because it allows me to see the full screen. I don't have to worry about my hand being in the way and I can't see things because my hand's in the way. <clears throat> um, but I also like how tactile uh, sculpting feels when I'm using a Cintiq. So it's it's really kind of a... Um, kind of an interesting thing to consider um, this I want to take this over and into the head a little bit more same with this little piece here like I feel like it's coming out from the head a bit too much So it's creating kind of a kind of a difficult shape. It's breaking the silhouette too much. Yeah, you can see like it's breaking that silhouette. Oh, I'm hitting the perspective. I need perspective on. <coughs> Thanks, Kemi. Do something kind of like this, something kind of like this. Pull that down and in, pull that down and in. Pull it forward. A lot of, <coughs> a lot of things that have to do with hair and, and uh, well, really just character design and character modeling as a whole 
it has to do a lot with you know yeah getting silhouette but then also trying to figure out depth you know because there there will be a lot of these like depth cues that aren't apparent in the sketch and so you got to come back and and try to play around with where things um where things make contact in 3D it's a little bit much <clears throat> I'm kind of I'm kind of torn. I'm not entirely sure that I want to continue drawing this out. Um, wasn't until you got the Cintiq that Zebra started to work for you. That's fair. Yeah, I think that's how it is for a lot of people. Let me see if I can get something kind of... Like the hard thing for me, I feel like... feel like I'm getting kind of like this overlap in shape that isn't necessarily the most um, aligned with what I feel like I really want to get out of it. It's not terrible. <clears throat> Ten year old, sixty dollar into us that had been using for everything. Yeah, a lot of people do that. It's like it's it's funny because like the old bamboo tablets, uh, the Wacom bamboo tablets. Um, I never liked them personally, but I had a lot of friends that swore by them, and they were like, like this is the best thing ever, and they, you know they like them because they don't have any buttons they have to worry about. They don't need all the extra doohickeys. They just you know use the t pen and the tablet, and it just works. Um, for me, I prefer. Um, <clears throat> I prefer the, oh shoot, come on, messed by polygroups. Um, I don't know if it's even that I can say just that I, um, Just that I prefer the the Intuos over the bamboo. It's just that it's what I'm used to. It's what I've always had. Um, so yeah, at this point, it's kind of it's kind of tricky to even imagine doing anything different. <laughs> Um, I've tried, oh, shoot, come on, you, there we go. Um, I've tried a couple of other, um, brands of tablets before, um, including XP Pen, including Uyan, um, I just, I never liked the feel of the other ones as much as I've liked the feel of the Wacom <clears throat> and the Wacom's the one that you're going to run into in the industry anyway so it's you know there's that um, I just like the thin pen that comes with this old thing can't draw it the fat yeah it does get a little bit 
kind of weird having the big thick things you know because i mean you use a regular pen and and i usually have a regular pen around a regular pen it's like it's so much more thin and and it's just it feels nicer in your hand right <clears throat> but then going in and using <clears throat> the Cintiq stylus oh I gotta clear my throat again get a cough drop or something um using this it's it's much it's much thicker it's a little bit trickier to manipulate and play with and all that but it's one of those it is what it is sort of moments I guess <laughs> Pull this over, pull this up. It's all just a matter of like getting it to fit the form now, getting it to fill in where I want it to. going to grab this let's see let's grab this particular strand right here and just kind of break it away a little bit that'll help to create a little bit more of an organic overlap yeah, something kind of like this oh anybody gone to comic-con this weekend <laughs> I'm always pressing the button on the pen at the wrong time <coughs> causes a lot of cuss words <laughs> that's a classic I had the pen buttons turned off interesting yeah, I always have my my index finger right over top of that button because I use that as like my right click. It's like so I'm constantly using that inside of ZBrush. Um, you know, I'm kind of liking how this is overlapping. This is this is working for me. Let me see. I'm gonna go through again and and check the depths just to make sure. Negative fifty. Do something kind of like that instead. Negative fifty, just just so that, that way it gets me a little bit closer on. On the draw, and then we'll save. We'll save this again. Um, replace that. <laughs> Got a small hand, so it's already weird looking holding a thick pen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty fun. Let's see if we can get this to wrap nicely. I need to turn off this uh, auto masking. It's like it's really handy until it's not. <laughs> it's one of those things you gotta you gotta be able to turn it on and off when you want to use it or when it's useful, and then turn it off again when it's uh, a hindrance. get this to wrap a little bit better here <laughs> learn how to sculpt my toes apparently somebody does that um, 
and I think that they participated in the sculpt off last year, um, which was absolutely incredible to me to think about. I can't remember the name. I can't. I. I it wasn't somebody that I know. Um, but I was like, dang, that's that's impressive. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's obviously you know, some people have to do it out of necessity, but it's, um, off topic, but funny. My friend's wife said to him, uh, you're pushing my buttons. He replied, they're buttons. They're meant to be pushed. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> is absolutely true if they are buttons they are there to be pushed <laughs> go ahead and push this in here like this uh, let's grab this one it's kind of fun getting the uh getting kind of the the way that it's kind of flowing into it into itself um pushing random yeah, that's how i learned zbrush too actually <laughs> it's, it's all just a matter of pushing the wrong button at the right time <laughs> Let's, let's grab this guy again. Oh, you know what? The crease just went like way, way up. I don't want the creasing to be super high up. I just want it to be down low. Um, and maybe it'll kind of change that again here and there as I add in pieces, but we'll, uh, we'll fight back. with that some yeah I kind of like how that's how that's turning out I'm liking those shapes and how the strands kind of like wrap together uh, Yeah, the old uh, the old Bad King brushes, they're all right. Um, there are certain things that I that I personally want to be able to do with my hair. So like, I've got a series of brushes that I um, that I made myself. Um, you know, I've got like this hair chunks brush, uh, which is really just a variant of my standard hair brush. Uh, my curls brush is made using my hair brush and so it's like you know it's this nice cool repeating IMM hair curls brush I've got my own braid that I've made um, purely because the other brushes that I've found especially with like a hair braid the, the topology didn't line up and so I wasn't able to go through and modify it like for instance uh, in here in the example you can see like, I've got like these creases or the these uh, these indentations that I was able to make because the topology for the braid is nice and clean um, post art station in this chat sure I'll post it um, just kind of post this link right here you can find me um, pretty much anywhere underneath uh, the username right down there smartest s-m-a-a-r-t-i-s-t combination of my initials and the word artist it's kind of nice and simple um but yeah lots of stuff there um but i like i like to build brushes and tools that um i'll say brushes and tools that bless my workflow um i feel like there are a lot of things that i want to be able to do and in order for me to do them the way that I want, I need to make my own, my own brush. 
Um, and a lot of the issues that I've run into with things, especially like hair braids and, and things like that in the past is that it, it was one, it wasn't making quite the shape that I wanted. Uh, and two, the topology wasn't clean. And so I wasn't able to modify it in ways that I wanted to be able to. I don't have freebies now. <laughs> um, but there, yeah, because like, this is stuff that I that I that I do on my own and try to sell so that I can pay for college for my kids. No, I'm just kidding. Um, someday maybe. Um, but it's. Uh, Yeah, it's all a matter of being able to get the shapes, being able to get the flow, being able to get the everything that yeah that I feel like I, I want and need for a brush in order uh, in order for it to, to work for myself for for production. Um, so these work really really nicely. This is this is this is working so much better than I was expecting. Um, it's creating such a cool look too, kind of like this this woven, almost braided sort of look. So maybe it's maybe that'll be kind of the intent uh, that we change to here. That it becomes almost like her hair is just all one big lump of braid. <laughs> Yeah, building brushes definitely helps understand ZBrush so much better because there are so many things that you can, um, that you can, you know, that you can learn from it. Um, so many parts of the functionality of ZBrush that you you get to dive into a little bit deeper. Um, and you, it helps it helps so that you can control the software. And that's that for me is a huge, huge plus. Um, making the software do what you want it to do, rather than, you know, doing whatever it can do, just off of the vanilla version. <laughs> um, let's grab the simpler one. pretty cool I'm liking I'm liking this brush IMM brushes are easily like my favorites I love IMM brushes <laughs> they're so so good interesting okay I'm going to try to take this and kind of bridge that gap a little bit here because I feel like it's creating a little bit too much of a hole I don't want it to create a hole. Let me see. I really don't need so many brushes. Everyone has their own setup. My toolbar is like seven, eight brushes I regularly use. Too many will complicate, at least if you have a time frame for a client. Yeah, for sure, it can. Um, I usually go through and actually delete a bunch of brushes through here. Um, some of the things like IMM Tune, I don't ever need it, I don't ever use it. Even the gears, I don't ever use. There are a whole bunch of different brushes here that I don't use. But there are a bunch that I've, you know, made personally for especially IMM type brushes uh, that I find to be helpful. Different buttons. Um, I have, like, I've never used, I've never used these uh, mesh extrude brushes <laughs> through here. It's just they're not things that I've ever needed. Uh, mesh splat. Uh, even this, a bunch of the, these scribe brushes, um, the bevel brushes up here, I've never used those. Chisel brushes. Um, occasionally, I'll use chisel brushes, like like standard chisel brushes, depending on what it is that I'm making. 
um, the snake cactus. It's it's weird, but it's super cool. I'd never used it, but it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, there's just a bunch of these that are just I don't use. I usually delete them. Um, but yeah, having brushes that are my own, it's really neat, um, really handy. Let's see. Let's grab that hair clump brush again. Let's grab this intermediate one, drag it out. A lot of what I'll do though, like I, I try to keep my interface really pretty basic. Um, well, that's interesting to know. The scribe brush, using it for hair. Um, it's probably still something that I wouldn't use if I did, not very often for sure, because like this is this is my preferred method for doing hair. Um, just because I, I really like the stylized clumps and, and clusters of, of hair as it you know as it as it forms. Super fun. Oh, it's within the seven that you use. <laughs> Work for a silver company, so I don't really need to worry about topology and stuff. What is what's the silver company? What does that refer to? <clears throat> I'm curious. Does the character actually have a body under the molded on clothing or without it? Is she do nothing more than just a head, neck, and a bit of upper torso? So she does have a body. In fact, I I created the shirt based off of the body. You can see that's that's what the body looks like. The arms, you know, similar thing. You can see there's there's an arm. Um, oh, prototypes for silver statues. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. I do I do have a full body on this one. Um, I don't always have a body. Uh, sometimes it's, it just depends on what it is that I'm making. Yeah, it's a little bit... A little bit lacking. It's losing form in there, so just kind of fill that in some. Strengthen that, uh, strengthen that tendon right there just a little bit, and I'll probably decide I don't like it later. But oh, you know what? It's coming from the wrong side. I was like, something feels super wrong about this, and I don't. It's because that's coming from the wrong side. That's not the side that gets stressed when you turn the neck. That's actually more relaxed. And then this side gets more tension. So just kind of build that out a little bit. Like I gotta pay more attention when I'm uh like that feels so weird. Why does that feel so weird? <laughs> it's because I'd gotten it wrong initially, <laughs> and I was trying to reinforce what I had, uh, what I had gotten wrong instead of uh, asking how I need to correct it. It's kind of funny. It's always a matter of kind of going through and uh, yeah, tweaking asking questions, reassessing. There we go, that feels pretty good. 
Maybe pull it in a little bit here. Cool. That's a little bit better. <laughs> Let me see. That's one of the most uh, difficult issues, learning any program. If there are too many options, it becomes overwhelming. It certainly can. And, and it uh, ZBrush was definitely overwhelming to me at first. Um, I started learning uh, 10 years ago, actually, uh, 2012. <clears throat> That's when I first started getting into ZBrush. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it, was, it was interesting. It was difficult because it's different from Maya. And Maya is what I'd been using for several years before that point. Um, and I like Maya. <laughs> but one of the things that was really difficult... Um, well, in fact, let's, let's do this. Let's grab... Just this. Let's get rid of that too. grab this and then we're just going to control click and drag that down um but i think the thing that i really i really liked uh and something that really clicked with me is is when i realized that everything's organized in a way to be able to help us understand like if we're working with um yeah 97 something around there yeah um <clears throat> is that all the things are organized based on what it is that we're wanting to try to modify. So if we're wanting to try to modify the brush, we have brush. We also have different types of stroke options. So, you know, those are, it just, it just kind of makes sense. Um, picker is one that I've never used, but I want to kind of get into it because it's, it has some cool uh, functionality that people have told me about. Movie is one that's a little bit more confusing and I've had to dig around to be able to really understand that one a bit more. But the things that I'll use the most of are timeline and the turntable. Otherwise, it's just setting up, um, setting up, you know, movie settings for when you're recording something. So turntables, or um, or time lapses, or things like that. Uh, document is another one I get into a lot. You know, being able to modify the size of the document, the color of the document. Uh, it, so it's it's really quite nice, and and I I super super appreciate <clears throat> how you know in my mind how very user friendly it is. Um, I feel like a lot of other packages like 3ds Max is one that I've always struggled with, and I never got the hang of. Um, Blender is another one. I don't like the navigation. Um, I can't. I just can't <laughs> um, uh, and I've I've had to I've had to use it professionally at one point just for the sake of being able to do renders and it was insane um, buffering Is the internet buffering <laughs> no rules just tools <laughs> this is true this is true Try taking this in, kind of place it a little bit in here. But yeah, one thing that I, I do want to be able to get into a little bit more is uh, you know trying to trying to render some more with Blender because EV and Cycles they're both really really super nice uh, rendering options, <clears throat> and I I did super appreciate how nice it looked.
just uh, kind of <laughs> no rules, just tools. That's funny, Prashan. <laughs> And I don't want to make anybody feel bad for, you know, using whatever tool they want to use. That's totally fine. It's totally up to you. I just know that for me, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't service me as well. gently nudge that out I'm going to have to tweak some uh, some shapes now that I'm getting these uh, hair clusters in here um, so we'll have to see kind of how, what, what it is we do about that um, I think it was my opera oh <laughs> Uh, coming from CAD, FormZ, and Rhino, ZBrush was the most foreign program I ever saw. Yeah, that definitely makes sense because those are definitely more, <coughs> um, well, they're engineering specific. And so it's, um, so you get very clean unit specific uh models that you know come out of that that's something that's ready to be manufactured something that's ready to be <laughs> everything right can you create a cat i've made a cat um i'm not going to during this stream but uh but i have before <laughs> Um. Man, oh man, this is so much fun, guys. I'm having a good time. Turn on the transparency so I can see how much of the uh, of the volume I can manipulate before it starts to lose based off of the uh, the underlying form that we created. and kind of push and pull it around until it's till it's nice very nice you can sit next to me <laughs> can, you, can anybody name that movie <laughs> It's been super fun so far. It's 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 so much fun to go through <laughs> and create things like this and to have it start to come together. Uh, it's always exciting to see a project start to come together. Like wow, that's fun. <coughs> that's a lot of hair. In fact, what I might do for some of these is just duplicate and then bring it down so like you know for instance I've got this green and yellow combo right here oh, I didn't want that one though yeah let's go ahead and grab this 
I'll bring this down so that this covers up this part down here. And it might, I might need to see about maybe really pushing and pulling some of these things here. Um, and, and I might need to rethink, I might need to just get rid of that yellow that right, right there. Maybe let's get rid of that. Apparently Mike Tyson's hosting some sort of live stream with Sticker Mule. <laughs> Just gonna pull that together. Oops, that's not what I want. Yeah, it's starting to work. Another uh, another character that I want to go through and work on uh, finishing up some more at some point is from a couple of years ago. I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, the ZBrush sculpt off where it was steampunk themed. Um, I really, really liked kind of the idea of my character and how she was going. So I just want to go through and do something. Um, oh, kind of based off of that. Or not based off of that, but like, you know, finish it, make it so that it's nice. So neat. I'm so glad this is working. It's creating a super cool dynamic sort of uh, combination of shapes and that's and that's what's exciting to me. Um, let's go ahead and put one in right here. That could be cool. And then let's grab that middle one. Let's maybe get a little bit of overlap to the hair here and then create more of a unif unification of the flow right here. So we'll get like a little bit of overlap here. We'll pull it down and in some so that it's not coming out so far. Um, kind of back and forth, make it work. Let me see. I think I tried somewhere in 2007 the first time, but technology was what it was. So I dropped ZBrush, picked it up again in 2012. So 10 years, yeah. Um, I don't use box modeling anymore. Now that Z Modeler has improved substantially over the past two updates, for sure, I use Z Modeler a ton. Um, it's one of my favorites. I do all my topology using Z Modeler. Uh, well, most of my topology, anyway. Um, in fact, I was talking about how, like last night, my the class that I teach at Noman, I did a, um, I did a, uh, a retopology using Z Modeler demo, <laughs> uh, and that was that was fun, but I definitely got very carried away and. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too um, 
tiresome for my for my class. I sure enjoyed myself, you know. I had a good time. Gonna hide some of these bits here, just push them down into the hair chunks more so that they don't show through and ruin the detail the detailed look of this. It'll just kind of help to keep a more solid look so that way there's not like light coming through in random places. Um, let's take that and pull that up and in. Let's see, it's already 11 o'clock. to here to make sure we don't have anything masked because that's a pain. Okay, cool. I'm going to duplicate this piece off. Let's say control W just said it's got its own poly group because why not? Let's take this and push it over onto this part over here. Let's kind of shrink it in some, make it so that it matches a little bit better. Go ahead and kind of push this into the mesh a little bit. And then I think what we're what I'm going to try to do is get another piece to kind of wrap around here. You know what? Instead of instead of doing that, let's just let's just pull out a new piece. Uh, might as well, right? Might as well. shrink it down some, put it into position. Oops, not that. And move it around. This is so, so helpful. Okay. It's really kind of kind of interesting. I'm trying to decide now, like this little area right here, I feel like I'm not quite liking. I'm not liking how it's like, it's, it's too horizontal. And so I feel like it's cutting the flow of the hair. Um, so let's, let's grab this. Oh the wrong masking tool available right now that's okay um, let's go ahead and use our move tool oops we'll just kind of shrink that up and in because that's helping to kind of restore that flow to some extent I'm just gonna to try to kind of rotate this piece just a little bit. And that should hopefully help it so that it feels more, uh, more with the direction. Let's grab another piece, I'll grab that uh, piece A. We'll clump that in there. See, that, that, feels, that feels a little bit better. And then it also gives us a little bit of a variation in scale too. So that's kind of neat. Let me see. I don't use box modeling anymore. Okay, yeah, we already read that one. 
Um, are you keeping anything? Are you keeping everything low with dynamic sub D's? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> cat was being a cat. <laughs> If you use hairbrushes, how do you manage to make the strands look different from one another? No, your 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 English is perfectly fine. Uh, y si quiere preguntar en español también, también sirve eso. Yo yo puedo hablar español un poquito. Hablo raro como chileno. <laughs> Pero ya está bien. Uh, Thank you, Darian. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's fun and it's really super. Yeah, like like you said, it's wild. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm. Try, I'm I'm trying to make things feel a little bit more uniform, and I think it's it's like the hair itself. This back hair is going in such a unique direction of its own that it's like. Man, like, like, what do I do? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these down here. I'm going to duplicate them off because this is how we do. And I'm just going to pull this around and plop it on the other side. Yeah, this is this is something that's super super different from from hair that I typically create because um, typically the hair that I create is very planned out and it's very you know, it, it. I mean, it feels more like typical flowy hair uh, this is something that feels much more organic and random and unique and I, I'm, I'm really kind of excited about how this is turning out it's really fun <laughs> um, it's been a fun one to, to build out so far Got to kind of shrink this down some, make it fit more into the form of what I've got. Something kind of like this, starting to work pretty well. Then I'll take this and kind of push it in some so that it's not interfering with the shape of the detailed hair. this fade into the background oh shoot there we go boom 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 and then this bit right here I want to make sure that this feels a little bit more it's like the flow kind of got messed up and I was pushing it around so it's just a matter of taking the pieces and making it work That's a bit better. Let's turn off the sketch so that I can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Hopefully, right? Oh, that hair is so fun. <laughs> mm. 
new hairstyle for 2023. <laughs> oh, what happened there? That was odd. See if I can get this to. Ah, there we go. So it's just that it's so far out there. <laughs> okay. Man. Whew. Hey, Chula. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, so a lot of what I do to make the strands of hair look different, uh, one strand of hair from the next, is, I mean, it's just a matter of having a couple of different varieties. Um, so I have, I've got these three different varieties that they, they look somewhat different. The arrangements are slightly different. I've I changed the how the uh, topology kind of comes in and out. Um, and then it's just a matter of uh, manipulating it once you place it. So it's pretty cool um como haces el cuello de la blusa es una sola pieza son dos la blusa y luego el cuello si sí, son son dos piezas la el cuello y también la la, la manga de hecho parece que que los brazos Uh, oh, parece que, que está la manga, está, está la parte de aquí abajo, la, el, no recuerdo cómo se llama eso, um, pero está, está esto, está la camisa, la blusa, están los botones y también está el cuello, y el cuello está separado para, para poder controlar mejor um, la forma, para controlar mejor Um, ya yeah, al algunas cosillas con, con la forma digamos uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of try to fit that in here yeah New hairstyle for 2023. This will definitely push that trend. Yeah. Everybody's got to try it. It's the uh, <laughs> the best new weave, you know. It's uh, <laughs> all sorts of. Uh, it'll be funny to see if anything actually. You know. Yeah, let's turn off the dynamic. And you know what, let's delete lower so that way we can just have more resolution here to play with. I'm going to add in a couple of ridges here. Let's kind of take this and, and kind of push it in, push it in, push it over to the side a little bit. Uh, this is a great way to be able to add kind of a variety of shape and form is that you, you you don't keep things just right in the center all the time. It's <laughs> so much shampoo, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh my gosh. So yeah, you don't just push it in just like right in the middle. You can take it, you push it in, and you push it off to the side or something. Um, and then something else I can do is I can take the next ring up and kind of pull it out some. So now I'm starting to get these these ridges, starting to get these kind of creases in here. Um, and this will help to create a little bit more appealing of a character because it's it's helping us to feel more like, oh, I know what that is. That's hair. You know, and it's not just a weird bald cap that somebody's looking at, right? Uh, Kind of fun, kind of fun, kind of fun. So yeah, I do things like that. 
I'm going to take this one. Let's kind of pull it in and over this way. Very simple, you know, trying to trying to keep it very clean, very efficient. Um, in fact, if we wanted to, we could come and we can like kind of pull this over this way to give it a little bit of, of a variety. And you can even have it kind of flow in and out like that. And it can, it can, yeah, that one doesn't really feel great, but maybe it just needs to be less, a little less aggressive there. Uh, you can hit control H to hide your mask and that way you can kind of focus on forms and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, you get those sorts of things going in there and that starts to really create the sense of, you know, uh, uh, of, of hair, you know, hair along the scalp there. Really, really cool. Let me see. Try to move the brush radius for edges in Z modeler. Well, so like changing the brush radius for edges in Z modeler. I mean, that's, that's going to change um, the function of the brush. Okay. Um, so yeah, and, and that sometimes messes it up. Uh, it really kind of drives me nuts, actually. Um, just discovered it, and it's great for what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess you guys are like, it's like late in the evening there in Spain. <laughs> Cheers, dude. No need to mask. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you can explain that to me, I'd love to hear about it, and then we can kind of work it out here. And because I'd love to, I'd love to know what you're talking about with your with your technique there, Kano. Kino. Ooh, in fact, here's what I here's what I want to do with this one. I'm going to soften that out just a little bit. Oops, come on, you. Salute. My wife is in the other room. She sneezed. I should have just written, like, bless you or something in the comments, and she might have seen that. <laughs> have my accu curve turned on or something I do it's like why is that coming across so sharp nah it's that's too much that's too much right there maybe what I'll do is I'll do something kind of similar to what I did on the other side and just kind of push it out here something like something like that That's not bad. We'll keep that. Do something similar here on the sides. Uh, we'll say control D just to be able to get that to be a bit more dense. Come over here, say deformation. We'll say, you know, say polish by groups just lightly so that we don't have to worry about it screwing everything up. Uh, move by brush radius in Z model and lets you pull edges, edge loops around. Huh. Let's try it out. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to say move. Oh, move by brush radius. This is what you're talking about, right? Edge loop partial. Well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. So you just make your brush really nice and big and then you can just grab that edge loop and you just kind of push and pull that in. Dang. Man, see that's 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 one of the best things is being able to uh kind of collaborate in that sort of sense. <laughs> um That's nice. Yeah, there are a lot of little functionalities to, to Z Modeler that 
you know, people, myself included, you know, just don't know. Um, so it's all just a matter of exploring it and, and figuring out exactly kind of, you know, how to, how to use it, how to apply it in your workflow, what it is that it can do, you know, so much, so much. And, and it's, it's all worth exploring. So I totally suggest going in and, and exploring that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually probably use that. Maybe not all the time, but certainly more than, uh, more than I have. Ah, don't know what that was. Okay. Let's get something there. Get something there. Something there, and I and notice I, I'm on this particular one. I pulled it kind of up toward. Um, I'm trying to kind of honor gravity. When gravity pulls on things, it's going to get a little bit more sag, and so, in fact, that's uh, probably needs to be up a little bit higher. Um, and so, because of the sag from gravity, it's going to create a little bit more of like a like a like a droop sort of shape. And so that's kind of this droop shape that I'm trying to hint at here. Um, and we'll, we'll change kind of the flow here in a, in a few minutes after we've um, after we've made some of these modifications. Holy crap, this is so stinking cool. That is a game changer. And I, wow, just wow. Wow. <laughs> Shoot. That is so stinking cool. Now, now I'm over here geeking out about about a really cool basic function of Z modeler that I never knew about and it's wow, just just wow. Just wow. <laughs> Please stop doing something with the with the with the with the faces. Just say do nothing. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit too close. I'm trying to vary up spacing, so you notice that like I I don't want it to be like the same the same width every section of the hair. Um, I want it to be so that it's you know there's like a, a thinner gap here and uh, and a a wider gap up there and uh, you know it's different things kind of like that kind of pull that up and in pull that up and in pull that up and in so cool oh my gosh yeah it is impossible to stop learning in zbrush even even if it's uh even if it's a tool that you've used profusely like like all the time there are always going to be things that you can learn about ways to apply it. Um, so yeah, so much, so, so much can come out of just constantly digging in. Uh, let's see if I can get, let's use this too much. You know what, that might be a little bit too regular of a shape. Shoot. Change the points to do nothing too, because that's gonna mess with me if I'm not careful. <laughs> You guys, this is this is so stinking cool. Play with that one right there, and maybe this one over here. Now it's like I'm going like too wild with it. I think. Maybe it's a matter of just like pushing it and then dialing it back if I need to. Um, it's kind of sh 
shrink down that draw scale size there. Oh my gosh. That is so stinking cool. That's going to be like a new one that I'll go and <laughs> tell my students about and be like, check this out. <laughs> this is going to change your life. <laughs> this in uh, maybe not that one let's do the one beneath it it's a little bit better oh not that one please not that one shoot dang so stinking cool what do I have so far as topology on this one Let's go ahead and add another subdivision here. Just for the sake of boop, doing something like that. Kind of stretch that out some. Nah, I don't like that. <laughs> we'll leave this one alone. <laughs> Like, leave well enough alone, okay. 130. I'm gonna try to wrap this up as much as I can in the next half hour so that I can be done by noon. Um, in fact, let me check just to make sure that I'm not going to be cutting into somebody else's uh, stream time. over here community zbrush live because we got to check out the live calendar are you able to see my messages i am now yeah um something weird stuck on my tooth um, just as a heads up, I think I'm not able to see messages from Facebook. I recommend, okay, cool, there's nobody jumping on, so I don't have to be too pressured. Um, I can't see messages from Facebook right now. I don't know why. I recommend jumping over either to YouTube or Twitch. I uh, Twitch is my go-to. I like Twitch because I feel like it's more, um, it's more current. It's more like in the moment of what's happening in the stream. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of my recommendation. wonder if I could do yeah, let's, let's take this down let's move this over here and then what I want to do I want to use the rotate tool to kind of create this sense of like a like a warp like it's kind of flowing up into this crevice over here and I want to have uh, let's kind of push and pull this a little bit this particular piece might be a little bit tricky to play with um, then I want to have another piece come down from the opposite side that kind of flows into it so Let me see. The chat used to include everyone. I feel like I feel like it used to. It's it's really kind of weird how it's. Um, hey Genzu, how you doing? The chat used to include everyone, and something happened a week ago. 
Yeah. Bummer. Uh, are you going to post this video for later or maybe have a tutorial for this chat uh, character? Yeah, so, okay, so so two things. Two things. Pretty much the whole of this character is online. Uh, and I, I've already kind of shared the, the link about it. Um, right over here. This is this is my, because like I, I sculpted this character during the live sculpt off. In fact, at this, at this part of the video is more where creating the collar is that uh, as somebody was asking earlier uh, so like here's like the blouse kind of being blocked in and all that and everything so this is this is kind of where it was uh, <laughs> yeah I do I do answer it, it just takes a while sometimes um, twitch and YouTube are the only places showing up though so if you're on Facebook and asking questions I'm not going to see it uh, just as a just as a heads up, so I re I do recommend jumping onto Twitch or YouTube. Um, the video will be available to to watch, you know, like on uh, like um, like this one here is on my own channel. Um, it'll be available through the Pixelogic channel and uh, available for you to watch anytime, anytime you have time. So, <laughs> what's a Facebook? Are you being facetious or are you are you, are you serious? Um, Facebook is a social media platform owned by Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because when I moved back to the states, I had no idea what Facebook was. Um, everybody's like, you need to get a <laughs> you need to get a Facebook. It's like, oh, okay. Oops. Every once in a while I'll do that on accident where I'll hit the tab key and it hides everything. Which is, you know, it's kind of nice. It makes for like a very clean uh, UI, but at the same time it's also kind of... Um, kind of troublesome. Go ahead and grab this guy right here. Okay. Control W. We'll grab this guy right here. Oh, I thought I had my mask lasso turned on, and I don't. Control W. Grab these guys right here. I'm going to need to control W just so that I have different poly groups, right? Uh, makes it so that it's easier to control. that I feel like is it this one nope that one's good that one looks like it's probably good let's grab these control W I think this is one yeah that's when I dragged out okay cool we're almost to the point of being able to modify the braids <clears throat> um no I won't be rigging your for animation <laughs> um yeah it could be cool but there's a lot of work that would need to go into her to make her ready for animation it's fine um twitch doesn't show up in youtube anymore that's interesting um Now meta, yeah, and they're rebranding everything to to be under that meta banner now. You think Milan Musk will buy Facebook too? Probably not, though. I mean, he probably could. Um, although, from what I understand, things are really falling through from his purchase for Twitter. So, uh, purchase of Twitter. So, uh, to my understanding, he doesn't own Twitter, uh, even though he tried to buy it. Um, poor guy. I, 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 I can't sympathize or empathize at all. I, I don't, uh, 
I don't know what it's like to have money. <laughs> that much money is ridiculous. Can you imagine having hundreds of billions of dollars? You know, like where 90% of the world's wealth is in your own pocket. It's like, ugh, so weird. Um, I'm sure I could figure out something to do with all that money. But, uh... Oh yeah, it's absolutely satisfying to see your model move. It's it's insane. It's so so cool. I'm gonna get rid of a few of these. Huh. Somehow they got welded together. Dang it. <laughs> I didn't want those to get welded together. Let me see. Let's say polygroups, autogroups. Yeah, it's still... They're still separate things. Modify, unweld groups, border. Okay, so I want to get rid of a few of these pieces. hidden okay so now I've got this one piece here it just felt like there was too much like tiny detail in this area and so I was like yeah let's just let's just kind of uh, modify it and make it work for us I feel like that already feels so much better. Like one of the hard things too now is that I've got this large, large clump of really big. Maybe it's just a matter of getting, getting these other sections down here to be kind of filled in, but let's uh let's do that we'll pull this down kind of wrap it around so that it's its own thing kind of tweak that something like that works pull that up and in pull this over and in like that works pretty well and then it's like a it's like broad detail like like broad shapes in a small area so maybe this can kind of help balance out this and balance out this and this um, let me grab this little guy and this little guy oops Duplicate that down. <laughs> thick hair. Yeah, super thick hair. <laughs> That's how you know it's authentic. <laughs> uh, it'd be wild if somebody had, like, hair that was actually... That, that could actually do this. Like, if anybody... I would love to meet anybody who can actually do this with their hair. <laughs> Even if it's not exact, I think if it's something that's, you know, pretty, uh, pretty close and interesting and whatever, you know, just, it'd be wild to absolutely be able to, like, you know, to actually, cool. Just wanted to make sure that that was just the single one piece that I was,
grab in there. Let's kind of push and pull this around. Pull this in some. So one of the things we can do with the hair, with the with the braid. Okay, the braid I'm going to want to break that out, um, so that it's its own thing. Split hidden. Let's go down. We'll rename this braid. In fact, let's take this up so that this is hair clumps. Recall this uh, hair base and hair button. Usually I'll put like an underscore, but you know, whatever. Um, let me see. Not even selling his crypto. It's interesting. I don't. I don't know where I see crypto actually going. Um, he's just a brat, <laughs> which you are not. Yeah, that's that's kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> Arbitrary point welding is one bug. I really hope gets fixed. Yeah, I don't like how it just. I wish that it was one thing that we could control more properly, and like, like be able to control exactly where. Uh, the point welding happens there is the point welding happens based on uh, scene scale and weld distance there's a there's a function inside of if uh, if auto save finishes up anytime soon um, is it under I'm trying to remember if it's under preferences where it's at um, Z modeler if I can find it. Good grief. Z sphere. This is something I, I wish this was in alphabetical order, just because it would be so much easier to find things. Draw. Draw. Well, shoot. Am I looking past it? Do you guys see it? Am I looking past? Is it? Is, am I just being a total? Oh, there we go. Under geometry, Z melding, Z melding. <laughs> it's Z melding, Z modeler welding dis, uh, tolerance. Um. So yeah, it's it's down all the way on mine, and I think it comes all the way down by default now. Um. But yeah, it's uh. Here, I'll go ahead and save while we're talking. Um. It's one of those things that still kind of drives me a little batty. I do want to add in kind of a thinner strand of hair going through here. I have a couple different ways of doing that. I can either... Oops. I can either grab what's already there or, um, which I'll, prob I'll probably just do this. I'll grab my hairbrush and I'll grab like this. I'll grab this one. That'll work. Make sure symmetry is not on. <laughs> I'm just going to drag that on. Let's say stroke uh, curve modifiers. Let's come down here. And instead of having it get like super, super thin, I'm going to have it do something like this. That'll be a little bit better. I mean, it's still a little bit too thin. Let's let's make it so it doesn't start off as thin as it is right now. OK. 
Okay. Let's just, let's just commit that, and then we'll kind of drag it out and position it how we want it. Because this is how we do. And this way, it's something that's already kind of you know fairly in the style already. You know what, it might be coming out like too, too far. I wonder if it's like, I need to break up this section or something. I don't know, let's, cause like I feel like, kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> Chisel brush. I hate the chisel brush. Uh, you know what? The first thing you teach. Oh my goodness. <laughs> first thing you teach to Z brush beginners how to have a stroke. Oh, that one hurt. <laughs> you know what? Let's, uh, let's grab this. I always hit that tab key yeah something like that's working because then it's breaking up that shape a little bit and making it feel a little bit more tied together I'm liking that that'll that'll work That'll work. That'll do what I want. Okay, so now let's now that we have the braid kind of broken out, I'm going to try to come on. I'm gonna try to pull this around, make sure that I fix a few forms, and then we'll start to stylize the braid so that it fits in with the rest of the hair. It's always kind of fun when you when you go through and you're making something and then you kind of have like a happy accident that you know like like the hair the way that the hair was turning out from purely just experimenting um, it was it was all accidental but it ended up looking in a way that I, I like you know it's kind of cool I like it <laughs> now will I like it next year when I do something cooler I don't know you know let's see <laughs> We'll see. Cool. So now that I've got this going on, um, if you remember when I when I shared my uh, my hairbrush showing that on my on here my braid, you'll see like it's got like uh, it's got like some some plane changes. It's got some um, it's got some like these cool breakups in the in the surface. I'm gonna make something like like that in in our braid on this on this on Mother Earth rear. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great brush too. I use it all the time, professionally and and otherwise. Um, really really nice. Um, and yeah, so this has. We can go ahead and we can designate poly groups if we want to. So we got auto groups. We got the three strands here. Um, and then what I want to do is I just want to start adding in things like you know creasing. Let's uh, let's add in. Let's crease this edge loop parts. And you can see that go that goes all the way through. And this was an IMM curve brush that um, Can you show us again when you made all bundles separate poly groups? Oh, 
Oh, so are you are you referring to like when I was up in here and I wanted to you know, say, for instance, I've got I've got this piece down here, I've got that piece up there. Um, I I went ahead and I wanted to make them separate poly groups, so I you know, I mask one out, and then I just I can either hit uh, Control Shift Tap to be able to bring all that back. Is that is that what you're referring to? Um, yeah, that's that's a pretty, it's a nice it's a nice thing. I I love using Z Modeler. If you're on something like this though, and you like you know you're you're hiding these different legs like that, uh, you can hit Control Shift A to be able to bring back everything that's hidden. But you know as an as an example, okay. So here, like if we if we look at this piece just as is. Uh, without hiding anything we can see that it's made up of different poly groups and I can if I control shift click on it then um, then I can you know isolate that but if I hit control shift a it's not going to bring back everything it's just going to bring back everything that's connected um, so control shift tap in the empty space to bring everything back um, there was also control shift tap to be able to, you know, with the with the lasso, I'm selecting the, the the edge loops. If I control shift S, that'll shrink what's visible. If I control shift X, that'll make it grow. Um yeah, kind of little things like that. is the core still free I want to get my friend into ZBrush to um, core is not free but core mini is free um, I'm not I'm not entirely sure like where exactly to find that yeah control shift a and that's it's a fantastic thing it is it is important to, to, to bear in mind that it's not going to be um, it's not going to be always very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, it's, it's not going to, to bring back everything that's separate. So if, for instance, if I have this back and I hit Control Shift A, it's not going to bring everything back. It's only going to bring back the whole piece of whatever it is that I have visible. Um, so that being said, if I were to have you know part of this stuff visible, if I hit Control Shift A, it's going to bring back the full piece of whatever's visible. Um, so yeah, whatever's selected, um, it's super neat. It's it's really um, yeah. I really like I really like selection tools. <laughs> They're simple, but they're super, super neat and insanely helpful. There are a couple more. I want to I want to add in one more of these uh, hair clumps back here. Let's go ahead and grab this. Grab this and kind of pull it down and in some. Just try to like wrap it around and close it some so that hopefully that hair looks pretty cool back there so there's that okay so now let's uh, let's keep going with this with this braid a little bit here I'm gonna keep adding in a few creases here and there like not not to everything and then we'll definitely want to add, oh, not that. Let's do maybe this one and this one. Let's add a crease to this one. Yeah, so now we've got now we've got like more more form to it. Some plane change. And because we have clean topology, we can come in here and we can say single edge, or we can just say control D. Uh, Add that in. We'll delete the 
delete lower here. And now we can go ahead and we can add in, you know, specific, don't know what they're doing. Add in extra edge loops in here, sort of thing like this. And then we can use our move, uh, move brush radius thing here, like we were doing before. And we can start to push and pull and create some interesting shapes here. We can pull this out here if we wanted to. Push it in down here. I don't know. You can just kind of think of different things that might make sense. And I take this uh, this middle one, kind of shift that in. Take this one and kind of pull it out some. We're getting this sort of this sort of detail kind of coming in here. Is there's definitely a need to add in more loops. So maybe it's a matter of just yeah, smooth it out again. Delete lower. Move by brush radius. Kind of pull this out a little bit. Maybe push this in, move this over. Uh, we can pull this up. We can crease things if we need to. Oh man, I tell you, this tool is amazing. So stinking cool. It's like, where have you been all my life? Pull that in. Pull this in. One of the things that's super cool, and I haven't I haven't done it yet, so try to try to bear with me while we do the other setup stuff first. Um, I want to try to um, use the edges on uh, on these on these pieces for the sake of being able to create uh, what's it called um, you know to, to, to be able to add in extra extra geometry Let's kind of pull that in to kind of create a little extra something detail in there. I'll show you what I mean when I when I get there in just a minute here. Can anybody hear the airplane flying over? helicopter or whatever it is. <laughs> it's probably a helicopter actually. Yeah, yeah, Core Mini is free. Um, what ZBrush needs is a substance painter bridge. That could be cool. That could be cool. Um, with everything happening, though, with the Maxon merger, it's it, it, there's going to be more of a tie to Maxon than there would be to Adobe. So I don't think that was something that would ever happen. Um, but yeah, do I teach ZBrush to my kids? I've 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 shown them some things, and they really like it. Um, Go ahead and kind of pull this over. Yeah, 
I've I've shown them a few things and uh, they enjoy it. They have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, and they they're still you know perfectly novice at it, which is fine. Um, they kind of lost some level of interest in it. They still like to come and like sit next to me sometimes and watch me work or uh or watch youtube videos while i'm working or you know, things like that um but uh yeah it's fun it's fun and they've you know they they enjoy being able to play with the symmetry and think things are um getting things to work in fun ways. Pull that down and in. Pull that down and in, something kind of like that. One of the tricky things is trying to get the shapes to feel about right so that they don't feel like they're um, so they don't feel like they're hanging unnaturally or anything along those lines. Gonna pull that in. Kind of pull this in. Maybe pull it in back over here or something like that. I like to spread out and make things feel a little bit less even. Um, it's because it helps to vary up the shape too. So that instead of having like this nice even curve, it has like a little bit of a variation to the shape and to the uh, yeah, the forms get to be a little bit more interesting that way. start to get some really cool interesting shapes there's a lot I think that we could go through and do to make this work right I'm getting to kind of a point where I'm just like eh, it's good enough <laughs> or at least good enough for now right uh, let's get some down here at the very very tip since this is the end of it it might as well right switch angles and kind of pull it down in a different direction. Okay. Let's, oh, let's just do a couple more, I guess. Something kind of like that. Maybe pull. Let's do it down here, though. And we'll do it up here. Okay. 
Okay, something kind of like that. Do something kind of like that as well up here, just to make it feel like it's a continuation of form. I kind of like the idea with these braids of like um, these points. Like I feel like it's kind of a, um, a compression point where things are being brought close together that are trying to not be close together. <laughs> and so, um, so by making it feel like it's kind of folding in on itself, I think that that helps it to feel a little bit more kind of like fabric, like cloth, right? Um, that same sort of principle. Let's get the end of this braid down here too. Oh, shoot. solo it out just so we can see things a little bit better. This tool so stinking cool guys oh my gosh whoever showed me this I, pff, you're amazing how would you end the tip of the hair I would model something you know kind of like what I've got here where I've got like a little essentially just like a clump of of hair um, I'll probably try to use um, like one of the clumps from the top of the head or from the like the the other you know clumps up above that we that we've been working on um i got a podcast in five minutes i'll be back at, yeah hopefully i hopefully i'll be off by then but you never know i mean you know you i tend to overstream. i think But I, uh, you know, I don't get a whole lot of opportunity to to work on my own stuff, and so this this is like this is part of my me time. Um, it's a time for me to be able to connect with artists and you know just kind of have some fun doing my own personal projects. So I might be on in thirty minutes. We shall see. can't believe how much faster that is i mean it's like uh, it's, it's certainly very different and it doesn't offer some of the flexibility that masking gives me but doggone oops <laughs> it's good to meet you kemi thank you for coming Last time I walked the dog and you still were here when I got back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to need to add... Let's crease some of these. Say crease edge loop partial. And we'll try to make sure that the creasing stays pretty um, low and level. So that that way, when we uh, when we actually get the crease to commit, let's put it down to one. 
Oh, one, please, one, 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 one. Okay, that way it held, it holds the. Uh, the shape but it also allows us to get a little bit more of that softness like what we have with the other um with the other clumps the other thing that this allows us to do and i'll show you here in a minute once we finish adding some very well earned creasing these edges will be left uncreased by the time we're done. Let's <laughs> grab that and that, we'll grab that and that, my cat in the hat, and that. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it's getting most of the uh, most of the vertical edges, which is fine. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, I don't think. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so now we've got this stroke. That are these uh, these creases defined? We have the braid in there. It's not quite as detailed as what we have going on up here in the rest of the hair. So what I want to do, and this is where things get cool. Hello, Shady. Welcome, welcome from Pac uh, welcome Pakistan. Uh, it, it's it's been kind of cool actually watching uh, um, watching Kamala and her Miss um, Marvel. Uh, I have a, a buddy who's who's from Pakistan, grew up there, and um, he said it was really interesting to be able to see the streets where he grew up, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Okay, so right here with this, uh, with this hair, what I want to do is I want to come up to Stroke, I'm going to go to Curve Functions, and I want creased edges, just creased edges active. So if I hit that, you'll see I get these these strokes on here. So I'm going to select my hairbrush. Let's grab the uh, single strand brush here. Make sure that it's a, a decent bit smaller actually. And then oh, the other thing that we want to check is that the uh, that the size isn't too crazy. Get something like that going on. So now we have all these strands that are going into our hair, <laughs> you know. Okay, super, super cool. And it's it's it gets to be a little bit, I think there's a little bit too much. So maybe instead of do instead of using uh creases, um yeah, it's true. It's true. I think there was a there was a movie. I can't remember if it was in Afghanistan or Pakistan or Iran. Like it was. It seemed like it was one of those, um, one of those countries over in those in those Arabic nations where I feel like uh, it's it was green. It was beautiful. Uh, it was lush, um, interesting architecture, and it just really just very different from the way that you see it depicted in movies typically you know where everything's desert and terrorists and all this stuff and um yeah, there's so much more variety to people in in those countries in pakistan iran iraq afghanistan then then 
than they get credit for. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to hide a few of these. Um, whoops, edge loops. Yeah, it's it's really sad to me that uh, that media paints places inaccurately. Okay, I'm going to try changing from using creases to using polygroups. Let's go ahead and we'll say stroke curve functions, change to polygroups. Let's grab my hairbrush. That's way too thick. That'll work. And then this is somewhere where I can go in and I can, you know, inflate things or I can in fact here's what I want to do let's go ahead and we'll say split hidden and then some of these I can go ahead and I can say you know let's move topological let's kind of pull this so that it's a little bit more uh, aligned to you know something more random I don't know but you get to you get to you get to push and play and feel this out this technique is one that I learned from the guys at XM studios it's a studio I believe it's in Singapore um, they do like super awesome high-end collectibles and it's phenomenal it is such a simple easy principle um, and you get you get all this detail that's really pretty cheap detail to add um, so yeah getting some of this in there Kind of pull oh, if I can. Get some interesting overlap with these pieces. Maybe get like a a change in flow, like a slight change in flow with some of these. Maybe I can take this piece and bring it over so that it's coming more from the same area this other strand is. You know, get all sorts of little things that you can do with this. Um, such a stellar stellar technique to be able to add in here but this is this is something that I learned from them from the ZBrush summit a few years back um, love it <laughs> I try to I try to learn from all sorts of different sources and there are there are so many things that you can learn from people who do very different tasks than you um, I don't want all of these. Let's go ahead and we'll say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Let's take this and kind of pull it around back, maybe pull it off of the form a little bit. Maybe we'll smooth some so that it feels like it gets a little bit more thick and thin. Hopefully some of this is like is helpful to you guys because this is it's fun. I'm just kind of getting into a groove. Okay, 
something going kind of like that. It's just a matter of like varying things up and making it so that it's not all you know perfectly uniform. pull this over so that it gets a little bit closer to the other stuff that's happening over there. Get that to thin out some. should probably do something similar ish up here with the hair um, I wouldn't go through and actually use the uh, the stroking function to be able to get that to happen I feel like just adding in little strokes kind of like that I feel are probably the best option Um, and what we could do is we could use the um, the topology brush. And we could just kind of, you know, stroke a few out here and there. to give myself like, you know, a little bit of something that I can play with. There's obviously like a lot of work that I can put into this, um, this little hair base piece here. Let's see if this will work. Boom. kind of smooth it out some so that it's it's a little bit too evenly spaced so a lot of this is going to be stuff that I'll have to let me see <clears throat> Yeah, topology brush is great. Um, let's go through and kind of try to clump it so that it's maybe starting off in one spot, but it's branching over to another. So one of the hard things with film, um, with animation, is that there's a lot of stereotyping because stereotypes make for an easy read. Um, and that's, that's, where, that's where these sorts of things come in. Okay, there are 
uh, you're 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 right in saying that they there are you know there are desert areas there are you know things like that that's not foreign to this area you know <laughs> it's but I think it's just that it's so much of the focus of what um, you know that it's it's making that the it's treating it as if it, that's the norm it's treating that if it's as if that's everything that they've got and i think that's the issue and that's the thing that people zero in on and focus on way too much because um, there are there are there are mountains there are you know it's it's beautiful it's gorgeous i've seen pictures and it's yeah i think i think it's just a matter of people not getting too stuck with stereotypes or prejudices or whatever it is that may be directing uh, preconceived notions about what a place is or who a people are. Um, yeah, I think it's really important. kids are downstairs watching Princess and the Frog. My daughter loves Tiana. <laughs> um, and they're just going, getting through the, the part where um, where the dad tells Tiana that he wants to, or, or, uh, or I guess the daughter, I guess, not the dad, but the, the blonde spoiled daughter character. Um, where she tells Tiana that she wants her to make a bunch of her beignets and everything like that. And it's like, man, I want some beignets now. <laughs> Usually my daughter likes to sing along with the music, so I don't know why she's not right now. It's kind of, uh, maybe she's being sensitive to the fact that we're, uh, <laughs> that we're live and she's performing shy, I don't know. It's kind of funny. Portos! Oh, dude, I gotta get some portos. We should do that for lunch. <laughs> this out and really vary this up some you know I feel like this is creating a little bit too much of a crossover I feel like it's it's kind of messing with the flow some just kind of shrink it down some pull it in some Technically, I could do some of that with the hair as well. Let's say stroke, we'll change it to border. And then, um, uh, oh shoot, oh, uh, hair, there we go, okay. Let's go ahead, let's commit that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and rotate it around. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's not even anybody down there. 
Maybe it's just going to be a matter of taking these pieces that have... <laughs> no, no, I can't. I can't. That's just not clean enough. That's just not going to work. Um, let's just use one of these uh, hair clumps to kind of supplement. Somebody was mentioning, you know, making it like a, like a three-piece knot so that it felt a little bit more like a like a Boy Scout handkerchief shape. Um, so maybe we'll play with that some. We can grab something like this and we'll pull this over here. down Oops. so it's getting a little bit warped up but you know it's okay fix it as much as we care to, right? <laughs> like that crease right there so let's get rid of the crease <laughs> you're back and I'm still here Leonard was saying it's like it's just it's just too much <laughs> I can't expect to uh, to make it out of a stream on time <laughs> and that's kind of cool I feel like there might be a little bit too much of it though let me see Move by brush radius. Let's kind of pull that in some so that it's not not breaking that silhouette so much. So move free move. Gonna pull that off a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay. That's pretty cool. 
big old hair. I'm going to have to continue this another time. Um, but that has been quite a stream. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what it is that you to learn, so sorry, but <laughs> Let's, uh, just for the sake of making sure that this feels like it's matching the concept just a little bit better. I'm just going to kind of push and pull. Let's kind of fix the form there. Let's grab the uh, hair base here. Make sure that it's not protruding through the uh, outside hair, like over here. Cool. And then, you know, at some point too, I'll go ahead and I'll take the leaves that we had. You know, we'll, we'll add those back in, but like in a cleaner way. <laughs> Cause this is insanely just, ugh. Yeah. So there we are. That's uh, that's the hair for so, uh, as you know, for where we got it to. Um, what we'll do next, you know, next time, next time I stream possibly, um, is I'll go ahead and I'll continue the hair by adding in uh, flowers. And uh, and we'll probably do a whole plethora of other things too. But we'll have to see kind of what we. <laughs> what we do when we get there um shucks yeah it's fun she's a she's a fun character and i'm i'm looking forward to kind of finishing her out i think that the the idea the whole idea for her is really funny you know how the flying fish was created <laughs> um other things that could be worth getting to at some point is uh, is getting things like the uh, the face to be symmetrical and get nice topology on there. Um, getting a full character, maybe maybe we could go ahead and take her through the pipeline once we get her all figured out. We'll have to see what we do. Um, yeah, dudes and dudettes friends of all ages and everywheres <laughs> thanks for coming and having fun uh hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream i will try to post a little something of this on my instagram later uh just so that you know you guys can be like hey i saw him do that um if you want to be able to find me on the social medias you can find me pretty much anywhere you want to using the uh the tag right down there uh s-m-a-a-r-t-i-s-t s-m-a artist smartest um i have fun i i thanks for coming thanks for having a good time with me and i'll see you guys next time whenever that is <laughs> smartest out <laughs>